road schedule beginning to tell on the Seminoles. Pittsburgh leads 35 to 7 in the third period, although Florida State is down inside to pit 10 even as we speak. North Carolina was trailing North Carolina State 10 nothing, and Monty Kiffin ordered an onside kick. It backfired. Since then, it's been all North Carolina, 21 to 10, fourth period. Iowa hasn't defeated Michigan at Ann Arbor since 1958. It could happen today on three field goals by Tom Nichols. Iowa leads the Wolverines 9 to 7. Stanford and Southern Cal will tee it up just a little bit later on. Clemson, an easy uh, time today against Duke. Uh, the Tigers have just scored again to go ahead 38 to 10 in the third period. Missouri and Iowa State. People have said Missouri is the worst 5-0 team in the, in the country. Well, Iowa State proving that today, 14-7 second period. Georgia looking for big things from Herschel Walker today against Vanderbilt. Jim? A national following now for Wisconsin as a result of their exploits in the Big Ten. Right now, however, they are trailing Michigan State in the fourth quarter, 19-7, and perhaps on the way to becoming an upset victim themselves. A team which has had great difficulty in the early season is Oklahoma. The Sooners have not lost to another Big 8 team besides Nebraska in five years, but they're leading Kansas only 10-7 in the second quarter. Major League Baseball playoff ongoing in the National League. In top half of the eighth inning, a two-run homer by Steve Garvey has put the Dodgers on top 3-1. We'll have bonus coverage of Pitt, Florida State, and Iowa, Michigan, and we'll take you back to regional football after this. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, and welcome back to San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. BYU and San Diego State today. Both of these teams have a super tradition of producing great quarterbacks. But if you want to talk about tradition, you can start with the backup quarterback for the Cougars. His name is Steve Young, number eight. He is the great, great, great grandson of the founder of the university, Brigham Young himself. But the tradition really started with Virgil Carter. Virgil did it all in 1966 for Coach Tom Hutzpeth and then went on to the NFL with the Chicago Bears. Gary Scheide set passing records in 1973 and 1974 and then went on to play for the Cincinnati Bengals. Gifford Nielsen was really something else in 1976 and 77 and he's been a sometime starter for the Houston Oilers. Mark Wilson, what a year he had in 1979 and following that season he was the number one draft choice of the Open Raiders. Listen to this, Z. he will start tomorrow for the Open Raiders replacing Super Bowl hero Jim Plunkett, Jim McMahon. What more can we say? The greatest passer in NCAA history and statistics. As far as San Diego State is concerned, their tradition started about the same time with Don Horn, who was followed by this man, Dennis Shaw. Dennis Shaw threw 39 touchdown passes in 1969. Nine of those, believe it or not, in a single game, then went on to be NFL Rookie of the Year with the Buffalo Bills. Brian Seip, there's no secret about this man. If you've been watching NFL football, you know that he was NFL Player of the Year in 1980. And oh yes, he threw for over 4,000 yards. Jesse Freitas did it all in 1973 and 21 touchdown passes that year. He went on to be a sixth round draft choice of the San Diego Chargers. Craig Penrose was the man in 1975, and he went on to play in the NFL for both the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets. The man who inherits the tradition, Matt Kofler, and he's on a roll right now. He'll start today, and he has the hot hand. So you'll be seeing two of that elite group on the same field today with McMahon going against Kofler. We'll be back in just a minute to bring you a look at the Cougars of BYU. Well, if you like offense, you're tuned into the right ball game today because we're going to see it on both sides of the field. Both these teams have put up impressive numbers. Statistically, the offensive story for Brigham Young looks like this. Almost 500 yards in total offense, averaging over 42 points per game. Lee, what kind of a look can we expect to see from the Cougars today? A true multiple look, and again, more multiplicity today because you will see Jim McMahon right here throwing the ball from the shotgun as well as the multiple tee. And what can we say about Jim McMahon, the greatest story in NCAA history in 1980. His favorite target, number 86, Dan Plater, a wide receiver who has both outstanding moves and excellent hands, and he has a nose for the end zone. A much improved running back is this man, number 29, Scott Pettis, and he is equally effective either running the football or catching it. As far as defense is concerned for the Cougars, it's kind of a good news, bad news story when you look at their defensive statistics. They are the number one team in rushing defense in the WAC, but they're seventh in pass defense in the conference, which obviously could hurt them today. But they have some good athletes led by this man. Kyle Whittingham, the middle linebacker, is the leading tackler on the team. He is also the inspirational leader of the defensive unit. 
And if there's one guy that we figure will have a nose for the football this afternoon, it is the son of the defensive coordinator, Whittingham. Brad and I is probably the most consistent of the down linemen, and he is going to have to generate some kind of a pass rush today. Also defensively, one of the stories is strong safety Mark Brady, one of twin brothers who plays in the BYU secondary. He's out with an injury. Kevin Walker, number 14, will be starting in his place. Obviously, he'll be under some pressure with Matt Kofler throwing for San Diego State. That's a look at the Cougars. We'll be back in just a minute to give you a detailed and up-close look at the Aztecs. Offensively for San Diego State, they also have put some impressive numbers on the board. We looked in the beginning of the pregame at how they compared in passing offense. In points per game, you can see they've scored over 30 and over 352 yards in total offense. They have pulled a really a 180 from where they were offensively a year ago, and that's because of this man. Matt Kofler is really, he, well, he's found himself in Doug Schofield's uh, sophisticated offense right now. And last week in the ball game against Iowa State, he became one of the greatest players in NCAA history. 517 yards of total offense. His favorite target is this man, number 88, Darius Durham. Now, Darius is a guy who runs discipline routes, has good hands, but as you can see, Z, he's also a deep threat. And here's my man, number 34, Bull Williams. I just, I love having a fullback by the name of Bull. Now, he can run, and he can block, and he can also catch the football, as you see him coming out of the backfield there. I got a feeling Bull's going to play an important role today. Defensively, statistics tell somewhat of a different story as far as the defense of San Diego State is concerned. They have some good numbers and some bad numbers, 19 points per game, but they've given up 361 and a half yards per game. Unlike BYU, San Diego State will show basically an odd man front with also some good athletes. Well, particularly this man, number 51, Alan Dale, who has a total of 62 tackles coming into today's game. And based on his performance last week, he was nominated for Western Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Here is maybe the best athlete on the defensive unit, number 23, Vernon Dean. They have a tradition of great quarterbacks here, and there is another one for the NFL. Mike Vance may be the most consistent of the down linemen, and he has a total of 14 tackles tackles, one sack, and two fumble recoveries. Obviously, with the offensive situation in this game, Lee, the pressure really is going to be on the defense. We can talk all we want about both offenses, but if the defenses don't do the job today, that is the team that's going to lose the football game, probably. Strangely enough, in an offensive uh, aerial display like we're going to be seeing today, it may come down to the team that makes the fewest mistakes and the team that plays defense. That will be the team that wins the football game today. And along with defense goes the kicking game. What about it? Kicking game is very healthy. Both teams have commented that they feel that maybe the kicking game is as good as it has been, both in the place kicking and in the punting department. Of course, one of the very interesting stories has to do with both coaches. Doug Scoville of San Diego State, the offensive coordinator at BYU, the developer of the great quarterbacks of the past, in his first year at the helm of San Diego State, and he has really turned the program around quite obviously, changed the offense and really completely around from what it was a year ago. Lavelle Edwards, his former head coach, they're good friends. There's got to be some unique feelings there going against each other for the first time. Well, I think the main thing is that right now, Doug Scoville has turned the program around here at San Diego State, and the quarterback, Matt Coulter, has confidence in Scoville's system. And talking to Scoville yesterday, he said that it, it was kind of emotional uh, going up against Lavelle Edwards for the first time, but by the same time, I mean, he felt that the game itself was so big and so important that it kind of transcended uh, the personal feelings uh, that he might have had going against his former former team, uh, his former head coach. Yesterday, Lee had an opportunity to talk with Doug Scoville. We hope to have that interview for you during halftime of today's football game. Let's go down to the field now to take a look at some of the pregame activities that are happening here. Both bands will be on hand today, performing not only pregame, but at halftime as well. We could not have a better day or perhaps a better setting for what will be, hopefully, one of the great games in WAC history. We may have the longest football game ever played today with the teams passing the way they are. And you might look, if the defenses, as we said, do not do the job and react under the pressure, to close to 1,000 yards of total offense between these two teams. That's how potent these offensive units are. Well, you remember the last time that you and I covered BYU was in a ball game in Logan. And that day, our telecast lasted four and a half hours. The ball was going up all the time. Jim McMahon was throwing that day against Bob Galliano, if you remember. McMahon, I think, had six touchdown passes. I think Galliano had four touchdown passes. Today we have McMahon coming off a knee injury, and I think we should talk about that, Lee, because 
He has what is known as a hyperextended knee, and he'll be wearing a brace today on that right knee, and because of that, they have put in some shotgun plays. Now, the main thing that the shotgun does is that it helps the quarterback in not having to drop back and to set up, and McMahon throwing out of the shotgun today, and I think we will see him going to that formation early. That could give him a little bit more comfort. The main thing that McMahon loses with his knee in a brace today is that he loses what is known as scrambling ability or escape dimension. He cannot make that quick move to get out of the pocket. It's going to be hard for him to plant hard on his right leg and really fire the football. As you see people coming into the stadium, this will be basically a crowd that arrives relatively late to the football game. If you're at all familiar with the San Diego area, you know what a wonderful place it is to be outdoors. Consequently, most of the people who come to a football game here spend a lot of time out in the parking lot with tailgate parties, getting themselves pumped up, getting their game faces on, as it were, before they come into the stadium to enjoy the football game. And that's the case today. As I said earlier, we are expecting a crowd of about 40 5,000 on hand. They have sold about 47,000 tickets for this football game. And there will be a number of people here rooting for Brigham Young University, even though it's a San Diego State home game. They will obviously, San Diego State, have the majority of the crowd. Iowa has defeated number five, Michigan, 9-7. to seven. How about that one? What a year of upset all around the country, but particularly in the Big Ten. Iowa State both playing very good football this year. Iowa State, the team that San Diego State virtually humiliated here in this stadium one week ago today. As we were talking about college football and the uniqueness of this situation here in San Diego, the 47,000 tickets sold, they're expecting some no-shows. But on a day like today, I've got to believe that if I were a fan of either one of these two teams, I would want to be here in shorts, as you see, tank top, shirt sleeve, enjoying the sunshine and really what's going to be an aerial circus. It is a perfect day for a passing quarterback. And from someone who has been there, I always like this type of weather as we look at another interesting final score. North Carolina, rated number four, remaining undefeated defeated despite the absence of Kelvin Bryant, who has been lost for the season. They defeating their arch-rival North Carolina State today by the count of 21 to 10. You were saying, what was I saying? Oh, I was talking about the weather. I was talking about the weather and the fact that I think from the standpoint of a passing quarterback, that what we have today, temperature in the high 60s, the low 70s, and relative humidity, it's a perfect day for a passing quarterback. You don't have to worry about too much sweat being on the hands. Uh, you don't have to worry about that bad exchange from the center once in a while. And uh, I think that also could be helpful uh, for Jim McMahon and his centers. They're going to be firing the ball, as we mentioned earlier, out of the shotgun for the first time. And that could be an interesting point. You know, there's a great tradition of quarterbacks on the West Coast. And I think the weather obviously has a great deal to do with it. The weather on the West Coast lends itself to a passing attack. You don't have to deal with the elements as you do in other parts of the country during football season. Perhaps that's one reason why San Diego State, Stanford, California, the Arizona schools, and really a lot of the Western schools, you've got to include BYU in that, although they do experience some winter weather late in the football season. Uh, this great weather, very little wind, and terrific temperatures, dry conditions have got to contribute to a tremendous history. And Penn State continues to roll in the fourth quarter, number two, Nittany Lions leading 38-16 over Syracuse. But really, Lee, uh, this has got to be the reason why there are so many great quarterbacks in this part of the country. Brigham Young and San Diego State coming up from San Diego. Be sure to stay tuned for this big matchup on NCAA College Football. We'll be back with the kickoff after a word from our local station. Stay with us. Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things from 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By AC Delco General Motors Corporation, over 50 years of quality automotive replacement components. By Connecticut General Corporation, we keep some pretty top customers happy. And by Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. Here come the Cougars of Brigham Young University in their visiting white uniforms, coached by Lavelle Edwards, with the record in his 10th year at the helm, 80, 31, and...
and one. You see their season record there, two and zero oh in the WAC conference, five and one overall, losing to Nevada Las Vegas last week in Provo, their homecoming game, when Nevada Las Vegas scored with about 20 seconds remaining in the game to upset them by just four points. The Cougars, perennial WAC champions under Lavelle Edwards, they want another one quite obviously, and winning here today will go a long way to determine which one of these two teams, as well as Hawaii and New Mexico, other teams in the WAC conference, get a leg up on that WAC championship for 1981. They want to bounce back from that loss, and they figure that there was no way they should have lost that football game last week in Pro Bowl. They felt that they let it get away from them. Scoring that many points, they felt they should have won, but they did not. We'll be up against it today, and if you were with us for the pregame show, we detailed how prolific both offenses are, particularly throwing the football. That will put a tremendous pressure on both defenses here this afternoon. The weather, as we've mentioned, could not be more perfect. A crowd of close to 45,000 is expected, and most of them will be rooting for San Diego State, but I can bet you that BYU will have a large contingent of followers here as well. San Diego State having yet to make an appearance from their dressing room. Could there be a reason, Lee, why San Diego State is waiting to come out? I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a little psych job there by Coach Doug Scovo, as we pointed out, going for the first time against his former team. And here they come now as they begin to mask out at the end of the stadium near the tunnel to their dressing room. You see their record there. They're undefeated in the WAC. They're undefeated overall, 4-0. Doug Scoville, his first year at the helm, he has a head coaching record of 25-19. and 19. He was a head coach at the University of Pacific before becoming an assistant at BYU. They beat Colorado State, Oklahoma State, New Mexico, and last week, a big win over them, 12th-ranked Iowa State, right here in San Diego Stadium. The captains meeting at the beginning of the field, or rather the middle of the field for the beginning of the game, and now, here come the Aztecs running on to the field, the crowd comes to life, the cannon goes off, and most of the people in the stadium have come to their feet to welcome the Aztecs to San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium in what has really become in a very short amount of time, perhaps their biggest football rivalry. This is only the eighth meeting between these two teams. BYU leads the series 5-2. to two. We'll be back with the opening kickoff between the Cougars and the Aztecs in just a minute. Steve Zabriskie along with Lee Grosscup as we are ready to kick it off. Brigham Young has won the toss. They elected to receive, and they will be to the left. San Diego State will kick it off from the right-hand portion of your screen. Number 12, junior Dave Meyer out of Dallas, Texas, will be doing the kicking off for the San Diego State Aztecs. Number 34, back deep to receive to the right-hand side of your screen is Bruce Hansen. And number 23, by Sikahima, is the other returner for Brigham Young, standing in the end zone or to the left of your screen. Meyer had the ball fall off the tee, so he'll have to replace it. And Lee, it'll be interesting to see what BYU does on their very first offensive position with McMahon's brace on. They did talk about going to the shotgun. Will they or will they not go to the shotgun in the opening series? I wouldn't be surprised to see them test it first out of the tee, then go to the shotgun, or they may open up with it. Now San Diego State shifts a bit to get people in the kick coverage position, and Meyer is ready to kick it. It's a good kick. Sikahima about eight yards deep will not return it. It'll be an automatic touchback. BYU first and ten at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the offensive unit for the Cougars of Brigham Young University with McMahon at quarterback Wayman Hamilton, Scott Pettis, Glenn Kozlowski, a fine freshman, Dan Plater, their top receiver, and Gordon Hudson, number 95, will be the tight end. Up front, Vincent Stroke, Calvin Close, John Adams at center, Lloyd Eldridge, and Steve Rogers on the right side. Protection will be a big key for McMahon today as well with his reduced mobility. First and 10, BYU at their own 20. They are not going from the shotgun, but they are passing. It's complete to Scott Pettis out of the backfield. And Pettis has the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Excellent effort by Scott Pettis, Vernon D, number 23. Senior defensive back out of Los Angeles made the tackle on Pettis. 
Here's the San Diego State defense with the odd front, Doug Reed, Steve Hallman, and Mike Vance. The three up front. The outside linebacker, Rick Reeder. Inside linebackers, Rick Boyer and Alan Dale. And Jerome Fraley, the outside linebacker on the right. Crodit, Bush, Fox, and Dean in the secondary. And you can bet both secondaries will be tested. Gain of 10 and a half yards. It is first and 10 BYU at the 30. Madison Hamilton are in the backfield behind McMahon. Number 51, Alan Dale, blitzing from his middle linebacker on the inside position, hauled him down. Not too surprisingly, we are seeing blitzing defenses today by San Diego State. They are coming right after Jim McMahon, testing that hyperextended right knee. They want to put pressure on him early in the game and make him think twice about throwing the football. The loss is two to the 28-yard line, second down, 12. Just underway with no score, first possession for either team. They're blitzing again, and they have him. Back around the 16 or 17-yard line, McMahon could do nothing about it. Jerome Fraley, number 30, the junior linebacker, the first to get there. Once again, a look at San Diego State's blitzing tactics. Now, they're going to be using a multiplicity of blitzers today. When we spoke to the defensive coordinator yesterday, he said that possibly they would use as many as 10 different blitzers throughout the afternoon. Remember last season, Big Z, that the team that was most effective against BYU was the University of New Mexico, and they blitzed McMahon about 80% of the time. It is third down. 23 yards to go. From the 17 of BYU. Good protection this time. Over the middle. Incomplete. Knocked away at the last second. Number 27, the safety man, Mike Fox. The intended receiver was Gordon Hudson, the tight end. Fox with a super defensive effort. It'll be fourth and 23. BYU will have to punt. means that San Diego State and Matt Cofer should get the football in good field position. That's for sure. As Mike Meese, number one, is in, the junior from Cody, Wyoming, will be punting, as you see, moving back near his own goal line. Number 30, or rather 24, Gary Nobles is the deep receiver for San Diego State. He's standing right now on about his own 36. Meese gets it away. A nice high-hanging spiral. Nobles at the 35-yard line. Breaks a tackle. Slips and falls as he tries to cut back. But excellent field position and a superb return by Nobles as San Diego State will have their first possession in BYU territory at about the 47-yard line of the Cougars. No score here in the first quarter. We'll be back. See, as you watch Gary Nobles on the previous punt return, the key thing is to watch his second cut because momentarily he has the picket fence set up for it. Now watch right here. Just about the time he slips, the wall is forming, and he'd been able to continue cutting back to his right. He would have had the fence and possibly would have gone all the way for the touchdown. A 49-yard punt by me is a 21-yard return as we look at the backfield with Cooper, Williams, Robert Smith, Sampson, and Jessup, the wideouts. First and 10, San Diego State at the BYU 47. Culper to throw. And completes it to Bull Williams out of the backfield. First down, San Diego State at the 32-yard line of BYU. Here's the big guys up front offensively for San Diego State. And they have a good offensive line, perhaps the biggest improvement from last year with Brian Skidet, Dale Yarbrough, the only starter returning, Matt Long at center, Bob Gilster, and Jerry Stabline. A gain of 15 yards. They mark it at the 31-yard line on the reception by fullback Bull Williams, whose real first name is Kerry. <laughs> on the draw, Don Roberts, the ball carrier, breaks one tackle, fumbles! BYU has recovered inside their 20-yard line. Number 47, Todd Shell fell on the football. The hit by Brandon Flint. Number 99, who caused the fumble. Don Roberts coughs it up. Another look.
look now on the draw play to Roberts. The fake was first to Bull Williams, and he has room. There is the contact. There is the loose ball. And the fumble recovery by number 99, Brandon Flint. No, it's hot shell 47. Hot Brandon shell 40. Flint made the hit. First and 10 BYU at the 18 yard line. McMahon flips it out to Dan Plater out of the run. Not Dan Plater, but number 89, Omo. Let's pause five seconds now to allow, allow our local stations to identify themselves. KGPG San Diego, Channel 10. A gain of only about one yard on the play. Neil Ballholm made the reception, and Mike Fox, 27, knocked him out of bounds. It's second down and nine, just inside the BYU 20. Scott Pettis breaks through a hole. Across the 30, a first down for BYU at the 31-yard line. Mike Fox again on the tackle. Quick trap plays. Scott Pettis, one of the players we talked about in our pregame show. And this is a running back who has vastly improved and has been equally effective, I think, both as a runner and as a receiver. Another first down for the Cougars. The ball very near where it was in the previous possession, the 31-yard line. to throw. Flips it over the middle of the tight end. Number 95. Crosses Gordon Hudson, and Hudson is going to go all the way unless he's cut from behind. Vernon Dean hauls him down at the two-yard line. Vernon Dean had too much speed for Gordon Hudson, as Hudson looked like he might go all the way. They'll mark it at about the two and a half. First and goal, Cougars. You may remember it was a tight end who broke the game wide open in the contest last year. That was Clay Brown and caught an 80-yard scoring pass from Jim McMahon in the third quarter of this contest. Now it is Jordan Hudson, number 95. Here it is, the last part of Gordon Hudson's run after a quick flip pass, a quick look-in pass to the tight end from Jim McMahon. And there is the athlete we talked about in our pregame show, Dean, a great defensive back. Vernon Dean, number 23. First and goal, BYU just inside the three-yard line. Wayman Hamilton, touchdown Cougars. That's how fast it can change. It was San Diego State knocking on the door, a 67-yard pass play. Jim McMahon to Gordon Hudson, his tight end, really took the spunk out of the Aztecs. Straight pop into the line by the fullback, reverse spin by McMahon, and there is the touchdown. How quickly the Cougars can turn it around. Kurt Gunther, number two, is on to attempt the extra point. Tom Homo will hold for him. And it's good. We have 11 minutes and 6 seconds remaining in the first quarter. BYU has capitalized on a San Diego State turnover with the help of a long pass play and a 3-yard line by Wayman Hamilton lead, 7 to nothing. Back in San Diego, where Gunther now is getting ready to kick it off for BYU. With the Cougars jumping out in front seven to nothing, and how quickly it can happen as you look at Phil Smith, who hopefully San Diego State would like to have him returning the kickoff, as you see from those impressive statistics. Don Roberts, number 43, the other team. Lightning can strike 81 yards in four plays. That's so typical of BYU football, and particularly with Jim McMahon at the helm. Gunter ready to kick it. Smith will take it about two yards deep in the end zone. And he slips at about the 14-yard line. They'll mark it at about the 15. And he was covered by Mike Jensen, number 22, a reserve defensive back. A reminder that tomorrow you'll be seeing highlights of these games here on most of these ABC stations on College Football 81 with your host, Bill Fleming. Texas, Arkansas, one of our other regionals today. Florida State and Pittsburgh, a big one. North Carolina, North Carolina State. Iowa, Michigan, Stanford, USC, and Missouri, Iowa State. Be sure to check your local listings for the time and station in your area on College Football 81. Kofler leads them up on first and 10. San Diego State at their own 15. 
Good protection, dumps it off to Smith over the middle. And Smith is wrapped up immediately by Kyle Whittingham, number 59, the middle linebacker. Whittingham had him played perfectly, but it's a good gain on first down as they move it out to about the 21-yard line. It's a gain of six or seven. It'll be second down and long three. The number's on Phil Smith, who was a quarterback. Good athlete. The man who returned the kickoff as well. Second down, about three and a half yards to go. Gopher again. Chased out of the pocket. Pumped out of bounds on the far side by Kyle Whittingham once again. Very close to the first down marker. I believe they're going to mark it just short of the needed yardage. It'll be third down and just about a foot to go. Kofler has done a great job rushing, and the average for carry is really deceptively because he's been caught behind the line of scrimmage so many times. Remember, every time that he is sacked, that takes away from his rushing total. So, yes, those numbers are indeed deceptive. He was particularly effective in the ball game last week against Iowa State. And as we said at the top of the show, in that game, he accumulated 517 yards of total offense. That's the seventh best single game of total offense in NCAA history. It is third down and about a foot. Kofler passing, chased again, has the first down, finally he's run out of bounds on the far side by Kyle Morrell, number five, almost tripped up by Brandon Flint, Kyle Morrell bumped him out of bounds, just as we were saying a moment ago, Kofler so effective at pulling the ball down, he looks for his primary target, his secondary receiver, now he's in trouble, makes his quick move to the right, and watch this, he's only 4'9 in the 40, but he runs faster when he's afraid, I think. Particularly when linebackers are chasing you, it, it makes you about a step faster. There it is right there, an example of what I'm talking about. He turns the corner, and he really puts on the speed, makes a little move right there. And that's the best move to make, is to use the sideline. First and ten, San Diego State at their own 37. Draw. Bull Williams on the draw play, has a block. Cannot get by one defender. Coming up very nicely, number 47, Todd Shell, who fought through the block to make the tackle on Bull Williams. It's another pretty good pickup, however, of about five or six yards. The ball, the ball marked at the 43-yard line. It'll be second down at about five. Los Angeles in the ninth inning, leading Montreal 6-1. to one. The Dodgers coming back. That series, really a tight one. Second down and four. San Diego State at their own 43. Kofler over the middle and complete to Darius Durham. Durham has a first down in BYU territory. Finally has run out of bounds on the near side near the 41-yard line of the Cougars. Number 27, John Mannion, a junior defensive back out of Las Vegas, finally ran Darius Durham out. Yes, there was a blitz on, and yes, this is Darius Durham number 88 coming from right to left on a crossing pattern. Underneath the coverage, the ball thrown right on target by Kofler. And there is the smart move again, utilizing the sidelines. Darius Durham, there are the numbers on him coming into today's game. The leading receiver for the Aztecs. First and ten Aztecs at the BYU 41. BYU leading 7-0 here in the first quarter. Kofler again over the middle, complete to Phil Smith. And Smith is hit immediately. Number 15, Dave McKee from the back, and John Mannion, 27 from the front. But it's another first down for San Diego State. Kofler to Phil Smith. Those are timing passes, and actually you can't do much with the blitz, blitz against timing patterns because the quarterback will take three or four steps, plant his right foot, and then throw that quick post or slant in route. And sometimes it's a little hard on a receiver. However, it's tough to defend. At the 29 of BYU, nine minutes remaining in the first quarter. San Diego State threatened earlier, but fumbled. Kofler. Looking for running room, he's wrapped up. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, does it again. It'll be a short gain, if anything. 
maybe a yard to the 28-yard line where it'll be second down and nine. Whittingham, I think, has been assigned to follow Mr. Kofler whenever he leaves the pocket. I would say that, and that is a good thing because he's the middle linebacker in the 4-3 base look of BYU. Doug Scoville, the architect of quarterback. That is not his overall record. That's not Doug Scoville either. That's Lavelle Edwards. <laughs> All right. At the 28-yard line, second down and nine. That's called being 0 for 2. <laughs> Bull Williams trying to get to the outside, dragged down from behind. Maybe a yard or two gained is all. Number 47, Todd Shell stayed right with him and hauled him down. Quick draw to the fullback. Yes, that's Bull Williams, number 34. And he's trying to get to the outside. There is Shell, and that is good. Hound dog defense. Swarming defense by the Cougars. And that has been so much a part. Of, of their winning program over the last six years. And often overlooked because of the yeah, eight offense. Yeah. Exactly. At the 26-yard line, third down, seven. Just a three-man rush. Kofler now chased. Hemmed in and hauled down. Number 44, David Apu, the right side linebacker, staying right with him. And Apu hauls him down. A short gain on the play once again. It'll be fourth down, and the field goal unit is coming into the game for San Diego State. The ball is at the 26-yard line. Dave Meyer, number 12, is in. He'll spot it at about the 33. It'll be a 43-yard field goal attempt. The punter, Mike Jeslin, will do the holding. His longest is 52. So he has the rank. A 43-yard attempt. And I think it's going to be short. And way to the right. I don't think he hit that one very well. Meyer just missed it. It's no good. BYU will take over first and 10 at their own 26 with 6.33 remaining in the first quarter. And the Cougars are leading 7 to nothing over San Diego State. <laughs> Reminder, the next Sunday here on ABC Sports, you'll see the New York City Marathon. It's the first time ever a marathon has been covered from start to finish. Be sure to consult your local listings for the time in your area. The New York Marathon next Sunday here on ABC. First and 10 Cougars at their own 26. Wayman Hamilton, the ball carrier, fighting his way through the line and picking up perhaps two to the 28-yard line is all. Met in the middle of the line. 60, Doug Reed, one of the first ones there. And, of course, Alan Dale, number 51, their fine inside linebacker. Second down and about seven and a half. There's an unusual play, a running play. <laughs> <laughs> well, do it once in a while. If you pass enough, the running becomes even more effective. Kind of the reverse philosophy many coaches have. Exactly. Ball control passing offense. Neil Ballholm in motion through the formation as McMahon drops back. Complete to Hamilton out of the backfield. Hamilton gets the block. Fighting for yardage, he has a first down at the 41-yard line of BYU. Dave Crotip, number 21, a junior out of Los Angeles, finally made the tackle in the secondary on Wayman Hamilton. One of the plays that's been so effective for BYU for the last decade, actually, throwing to their backs on short routes like this, a flat pattern. Raymond Hamilton, the leading scorer on the team by far, he had 60 points coming into today's game. And Jim McMahon, now four of five in the passing department for 91 yards, and more records still are available for Jim McMahon. We'll keep you up to date on those. On first down, over the middle, complete. The Kozlowski, number 25, his freshman wide receiver, Dave Krotop, again made the tackle. But not before Glenn Kozlowski, the freshman from Carlsbad, California, which is very near San Diego, made a fine reception over the middle. First and ten Cougars at the Aztec 40. Jim McMahon really took a lick on that play, but he showed some of the poise that's made him one of the great quarterbacks in NCAA history. He stood right in the pocket and threw that deep drag in route to Kozlowski. From the San Diego State 40-yard line, BYU leading 7-0 still in the first quarter. Pressure from behind. McMahon running. 
being hit from the blind side right at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Number 30, Jerome Frady, the blitzing linebacker out of Bakersfield, California, made the tackle on McMahon from behind as Jim tried to step up. Gain of a yard, maybe. I'm sure Lavelle Edwards gasps every time he sees McMahon take off. I think I said during the pregame, Jim, by the way, that he was wearing a brace on his right knee. Make that his left knee. Nevertheless, it does limit one important part of his game, his scrambling ability. He moved forward very well that time. His lateral mobility, however, will be in question. Four minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Second down and about nine. Complete to Hudson. Hudson fighting to get to the first down marker will be short as he's dragged down. Vernon Dean and Jerome Frady combining to make the stop. It'll be third down and about a yard to go. Jim McMahon picking right up where he left off in 1980, and the season that he had last year was the most incredible in NCAA history. And to me, see, I think that he deserved the Heisman Trophy. I think he deserved the Heisman Trophy. Look at his numbers already, already over 100 yards, still here in the first quarter. I would have to agree with you that I felt he deserved it last year as well. Third down, one, at the San Diego State 31 marker is down. The pass is too tall for Neil Ballholm and incomplete, but perhaps we have encroachment on San Diego State's Jeff Morgan, number 96, who did move prior to the snap of the ball. We'll wait for our officials and referee Pat Flood to give us the indication. Offside against San Diego State is the indication. Pat Flood, the referee, Gene Agnes, the umpire, Bill Malone is the head linesman, David Grounds, the line judge, John Cobb, the field judge, and Jack Combs, the back judge. They're offsides on the defense, and first down. Indicating offside San Diego State, that gives BYU a first down now at the 26 of the Aztecs. 3.27 remaining in the first quarter, BYU 7-0. Blitz is on again. McMahon dumping it off over the middle, and it's complete to Hamilton. Wayman Hamilton getting it down inside the 10 to about the 6-yard line. Vernon Dean and 45, Alvin Bush made the tackle. Wayman Hamilton may be shaken up on the play as well. Here it is again. This is what you call an improv. Now, Jim McMahon is looking for one of his wide receivers as his primary target. He starts to move around a little bit. You can see how he's limited in terms of lateral mobility, but he still finds Wayman Hamilton, number 33. Now, let's see the hit because he comes up hurt. One, two, three, four Aztecs are around him. And he is still down at about the six-yard line. You see him being attended to there. Jim McMahon, obviously, concerned as well. And what reception statistics those are for a running back. That is typical of BYU football, however. They scatter five. They utilize all five of their receivers. Jim McMahon now seven of eight in the passing department for 138 yards. He now owns, listen to this, Z, he now owns 36 NCAA records. There's Hamilton up and coming off, jogging. May have just gotten the wind knocked out of him as he was sandwiched in between a number of players, as Lee mentioned. Here, look at this one in the first quarter. Arkansas leading number one ranked Texas 15 to nothing. Lou Holtz won't need any one-liners for this. <laughs> it's far from over, however, but that is somewhat of a surprise. That game being played in Fayetteville. Arkansas at home. First and goal, Cougars at the Aztec 6. McMahon on the slant in, touchdown, BYU, Dan Plater, his number one receiver, made the reception in the end zone, and it's another Cougar touchdown, another TD pass, McMahon to Plater. Pro scouts have compared Jim McMahon to the great Bob Greasy. Look at this, the fast release, he sets up quick, that ball is threading the needle to his favorite target, wide receiver number 86, Dan Plater. Kurt Gunther in to attempt the extra point, Tom Homo will hold. Gunther hits it. He's now 32 out of 36 on the season. Two minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Cougars of BYU lead San Diego State's Aztecs 14 to nothing. A 74-yard drive in seven plays has put BYU out in front 14 to nothing. And Gunther
pressure is on to kick it off for the Cougars once again, something he does quite often. The way they score, he has a lot of practice kicking off. Phil Smith, standing near the goal line, has it one yard deep. Breaks one tackle and gets out across the 25 with excellent speed. Phil Smith finally knocked down by number 48, Brian Hansen. Watch the short release of Jim McMahon. One, two, three steps. There is the pass. A slant in route to his wide receiver, number 86, Dan Plater. That is precisely where the slant in route should be thrown. First and ten, San Diego State. That pass, extremely well thrown. Vernon Dean with good coverage. Yes, he could do nothing about it. Just outside the 25 for the Aztecs who need to get something moving. They've moved the ball fairly well. Missed a field goal and drove deep and turned it over on a fumble. Sacked in the backfield is Kopler. Breaking through very quickly, number 59, Kyle Whittingham, who has just so far played a superb football game from his middle linebacker position. Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham, who we spotlighted at the top of our show, coming from his middle linebacker position. Now, Kofler is sprinting to his left. And obviously, as you pointed out earlier, Zeke, he has been assigned to the quarterback. He is dogging Matt Kofler wherever he goes. The loss is all the way back to the 15-yard line. A loss of 10 yards on the play. Really closer to the 16. It'll be second down and 20. the draw play. Cole Williams cut down as he crosses the 15-yard line. Number 44, David Opiu, a junior out of Carson, California, made the play. Well, you know, some, some people said this might be sort of like an inter-squad game because the offenses are so similar. Los Angeles has beaten Montreal in the National League Championship Series today, 7-1. to one. And we remind you that you will see the World Series, either the Dodgers or the Expos, who will decide that series tomorrow against the Yankees right here on ABC this fall, beginning October 20th, 5 Pacific Time, 6 Mountain. Third down. Kofler flips it out to Bull Williams out of the backfield, and Williams is hauled down immediately by Todd Schell. Good coverage by the Cougars, as Williams looked to have an open field, but it closed up very quickly. It'll be fourth down, about 11 yards to go, and San Diego State will have to kick it away. Based on what we have seen the last two years, and this is the third straight the year that this game has been televised, I would say that BYU has San Diego State's number. Of course, the game is still very young. True. There you see Mike Jeslin, who's averaging over 44 yards per kick, a senior from Tustin, California, back deep to receive by Sikahima, number 23, a sophomore running back. Not a real good kick. Bounds on the 40-yard line of BYU. Now gets a good roll for the Aztecs and will be rolling dead at about the 32 or 3-yard line. Just 31 seconds remain in the first quarter of play. That was the first punt of the ball game for San Diego State as we look at Penn State continuing to roll. Even without Kelvin Bryant, North Carolina beating arch-rival North Carolina State. There is the upset of the day. Michigan losing again, and Clemson still undefeated, beat Duke 38-10. The Tigers have got it going under Danny Ford this year. Now a flag goes down, and we may have a delay of game penalty against the Cougars. I don't know. Iowa State, another hot team this year. That would be a major upset. The illegal procedure is the indication against BYU. McMahon conferring with the official who made the call. It was the head linesman. But they're going to move the Cougars back to about the 27. Number 95 was coming, and he moved. So it's still a first down. There you hear from referee Pat Flood that the tight end Gordon Hudson, number 95, was covered, meaning that he was on the line of scrimmage and in his down position, and he moved. You can't do that. You can't do that. First down and 15 yards to go now. BYU at their own 27. Scott Pettis straight ahead to the 30-yard line. Gain of about three before he's whipped up. 
covered by number 72, Brad Williams, a junior out of Jackson, New Jersey, who's a long way from home. They'll mark it at the 31. It's a gain of four. It'll be second down and 11 yards to go. The clock running now with 10 seconds left in the quarter. They may not get another play off. We have still not seen the shotgun formation. We have not. We may not if they hold the lead. Nope. And the time has run out here in the first quarter. They will not get another playoff. BYU has jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead over the San Diego State Aztecs. We'll be back here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego with this black shootout continuing in a moment. Steve Zabriskie along with Lee Groskup welcoming you back to San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium starting the second quarter with BYU leading San Diego State 14 to nothing. Jim McMahon has 155 yards passing for the first quarter. If he keeps that up at the same rate for the next three quarters, he'll have 620 yards for the game. Kind of hard to believe. From the 31-yard line, second down 11. McMahon firing again. Incomplete. Intended for Scott Culley, number three, at about the 45-yard line of BYU. He was covered by Vernon D, number 23. We talked about the, the tradition of cornerbacks uh, here at San Diego State. Vernon Dean, another one of those good defensive backs. Fellows like Nate Wright, Willie Buchanan, Monty Jackson, his brother Terry Jackson, Reuben Henderson. Just to name a few. Not only quarterbacks, but cornerbacks as well. As you saw, BYU with nine sets of brothers. And third and 11, BYU at their own 31. McMahon flips it out to Scott Pettis. Pettis covered and hauled down by Vernon Dean again. Right at the line of scrimmage, Vernon Dean had it played perfectly. It's not hard to see why uh, pro scouts are interested in number 23, Vernon Dean. Now watch his reaction here as a swing route comes out his way. See where he is? See his position. There you look at the San Diego State bench as BYU will be punting and Mike Meads. 6'3", 205-pound junior will kick it away. Gary Nobles, number 24, is back deep to receive for San Diego State. Nice line drive, driving Nobles back to the 15-yard line. And he slips and falls, trying to cut at the 21 or 2. 49, John Ramage, a junior linebacker out of Orem, Utah, was down there to cover him. As Nobles could not get on track, it'll be first and 10, San Diego State. They'll mark it at the 22. Would you like to hear another record that Jim McMahon has set? For that last touchdown pass to Dan Plater, uh, he has now accounted for 456 points in a three-year career. The previous record for a three-year career, 453 points by Danny White of Arizona State. Now, of course, with the Dallas Cowboys. Very much so. The records keep piling up. First and 10 Aztecs at their own 22. Kofler to pass. Under pressure, he's dropped inside the 10-yard line. Kyle Whittingham again, number 59. They'll mark it right at the 10. Those two inside linebackers, uh, Dale and Whittingham, the guys we spotlighted in our pregame show, are certainly living up to their advanced billing today. The 10-yard line, the loss is about 12 yards. It'll be second down, 22 yards to go. Both teams blitzing and doing it somewhat effectively so far. Both are near his own goal line. He's knocked down at about the three-yard line. Number 73, Pulisila Filiunga, junior to his friends. Covered him up at that point. Another big loss for the Aztecs, and they'll have it inside their own five now. It'll be third down and a quarter mile to go. There's the eight sets of brothers on the BYU team. 32 are married, and four coaches have sons. It's a family affair, would you say? A family affair. And a very effective one so far. Third down, 28 yards to go. Kofler on the quarterback draw tries to get some of it back. Breaks a tackle out through the 18-yard line. 
Matt Cooper showing some good strength. Kyle Whittingham, 59, and Dave McKee, 15, finally combined to make the tackle. But Cooper gets some good yardage back as he moves it out to about the 18, but still fourth down, however. San Diego State will have to kick it away. Cooper is 6'3 and about 187 pounds, and based on his recent improvement, he now looms as a prospect for the NFL. He was not that highly regarded coming into this season. He has improved dramatically under coach Doug Scoville in recent weeks. That's Mike Jeslin, number two, senior punter for the Aztecs, by Sikahima's back deep. End over end, taken at the 48-yard line by Sikahima, looking for an opening and gets it into Aztec territory at about the 44-yard line. BYU leading 14 to nothing with 11 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the second quarter. We'll have a first and 10 at the Aztec 44 when we return. Following a 35-yard punt by Mike Jeslin, BYU with a first and 10 at the Aztec 44. There is Arkansas with another field goal lead. That is the original big shootout. Well, it is. <laughs> that is. Oh, that was the original big shootout. That's what they called it. I think it was 1969. 1969. Exactly. the national championship. McMahon to draw play to Wayman Hamilton. Hamilton breaking through. First down, BYU as he falls forward near the 30-yard line of San Diego State. They'll mark it just inside the 31. Mike Fox, the safety man. The junior out of Fontana, California, tripped him up. Wayman Hamilton on the draw play, which is the best running play for both teams, understandably, because their offenses are built around the pass. Now watch some good moves as he starts to his right, cuts back to his left, goes back to his right again. Wayman Hamilton, who came into today's game, far and away the team's leading scorer, 60 points, has already scored once, so now he has 66 points for the season. Shows you that he also has open field ability. First and 10 Cougars at the 31 of the Aztecs as McMahon drops straight back. Blitz. And it's complete. Yes. Neil Ballholm, number 89, with a nice sliding reception in front of number 23, Vernon Dean. Ballholm, a junior from Vancouver, Washington. Ballholm running a down and in route. Now watch it. It's a curl in route, and Jim McMahon, you cannot see, is throwing this ball under a lot of pressure. But he puts the ball low and to the inside. That is a safe place to throw it. Watch McMahon. He sees the blitz coming. He knows he's going to have to hurry his route. Watch right here. He still stands tall under a lot of pressure. There's ball harm from another viewpoint running the curl in route. And see how safely that pass is thrown. A good testimony to the strength of his arm as well as he was off balance when he fired that pass. First and ten. Over the middle. Complete. Kozlowski, touchdown BYU. I think I've seen a quicker release since Joe Namath, and, and one of the guys that Jim McMahon admired when he was growing up was Joe Namath. His two idols were Joe Namath and Fran Tarkington. He throws this ball with a very fast release. Kozlowski coming again on a down and in or curl in route, and look at that ball. Talk about threading the needle and with a fast release. And a great catch at the other end. Kurt Gunther with the extra point. It's good. 10 minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the second quarter. It's been all BYU so far. The Cougars now lead the Aztecs 21 to nothing. What a World Series that's going to be, regardless of whether the Dodgers or the Montreal Expos make it, because the New York Yankees are producing enough news by themselves to make it an interesting series. That's a team that uh, they don't like each other very much. <laughs> Starts Tuesday right here on ABC, the World Series for 1981. 21 to nothing, BYU with the lead now. Bill Smith, the deep back, receiving his Kurt Gunther is set to kick off once again for Brigham Young. Again, it's another good kick. Smith, about three yards deep, will not run it out. An automatic touchback, first and 10 at the 20. Let's take another look at a super pass and an unbelievable catch by Glenn Kozlowski, an outstanding freshman. Kozlowski running the curl in route. Jim McMahon throwing the ball again with the blitz on. And I cannot uh, envision that ball being thrown any better. Right where it had to be. A 13-yard touchdown pass that made it 21 to nothing with Gunther's extra point. San Diego State now very capable of coming back. They've got a prolific offense of their own. They've moved the ball fairly well. They just have not put any points on the board yet. First and 10 at their own 20. Don Roberts, the ball carrier. 
he will go nowhere and lose a couple of yards. Super penetration by the right side of the defensive line for BYU. Kyle Whittingham, 59, number 93. Brad and I, 83, Barry Oates, all in there. There's another one of those unusual plays that we talked about earlier. A running play. Every so often they do it. Matt Kofler, perfect. Four for four in the passing department for 49 yards. Jim McMahon, now 11 of 13 for 174 yards and two touchdowns. Second down, 11. Kofler to Smith. Complete. Phil Smith with a nice catch. Right in front of Dave McKee, the senior from Holden, Utah. And Phil Smith hauls it in for a... 10-yard gain. It'll be at the 29-yard line, third down and one as we look at the BYU scoring line. Three plays, 44 yards. Kozlowski, the man on the end of the scoring pass. As you mentioned, he's only a freshman and a good one. There's the time remaining. We're in the second quarter. San Diego State with a third and one at their own 29. Hit in the backfield, fumbles. BYU may have recovered. It depends on where they mark it. It is San Diego State's ball. It'll be fourth down. San Diego State will have to punt it away. As Williams was hit right after he got the handoff. Mike Morgan, number 77, submarining in there. But the Aztecs retain possession. Those straight handoffs are high-risk plays for the Aztecs. It's unusual. They can throw the ball 50 yards, but... 50 times. Well, you don't run very much. Sometimes you have more of a problem with that. You don't work on it that much. High risk. Mike Jeslin, the punter, is in by Sikahima, number 23. The lone deep back for the Cougars. Another end-over-end -end kick. Sikahima watches it bounce. It takes a BYU bounce and will be downed at the 45-yard line of BYU. Vernon D, number 23, down there to catch the football. First and 10 Cougars at their own 45 with 8.48 remaining in the second quarter and BYU out in front of San Diego State 21 to nothing. A reminder that we've got a special coming up Sunday night on NFL football. The LA Rams and the Dallas Cowboys a big one in the NFC at 6 Mountain and 5 Pacific and then on Monday Night Football the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. A little black and blue divisional action going for you. Sunday and Monday night. NFL football here on ABC. On first and 10, McMahon fires it complete. Coming out of the backfield is Bruce Hansen. A sophomore from American Fort Utah picks up about five yards near midfield before Dave Crodup, number 21, and number 40, Mark Coleman, bring it down. Hansen's first reception and first offensive play of the afternoon. You ever been in American Fork? I have. I have relatives there. Is that right? Yes, I do. How about Spanish? Spanish Fork is nearby. Yeah. Been there. All right. You and I both spent a little time in Utah. Utah backgrounds. Yep. Right at midfield, second down and five for BYU. Fumble. The handoff exchange, and I think San Diego State has recovered. Jimmy Jones, a reserve running back who was into the game. He never really got control of the ball. It squirted forward. And number 72, Grant Williams, a junior from Jackson, New Jersey, has come up with the fumble recovery. Jimmy Jones is the man getting the handoff. It looks to be a mix-up, but it's really a misdirection. And Brad Williams is going to be coming up with a football for the Aztecs. This is really their first big break in terms of turnovers, and now they have field position. They've been deeper into uh, BYU territory than this, but they have yet to score. First and 10 from the BYU 48. Over the middle and complete. Ellis, number 18, out of the backfield, and Ellis fighting for yardage gets a first down near the 35. Steve Brady, number 13, and Tom Holwell, number 46, finally, all down Craig Ellis. Craig Ellis running just a little check down route here. Watch it. He makes a cut to the inside. He is an explosive breakaway back who was effective in this ball game last season. Look at this. If there's one guy they think might be a game breaker for them, it's number 18, Craig Ellis, on the end of that Matt Coker pass. Ellis, a senior from Los Angeles. First and 10, Aztecs at the Cougar 35. Under pressure, drop. David Apu, number 44, blitzing, drops Matt Kofler back around the 45-yard line. A loss of about 10 yards as they move outside the 45. 
It'll be second down and about 20 or 21. Strong dog. The strong side linebacker blitz. And there he is, David Apu. From Carson, California. A 225 pound junior. Not the kind of dog you want to have around the house. <laughs> Not friendly. Second down and 20. Just outside the 45. Kofler under pressure again. Gets it off complete. But the hit is made immediately by Kyle Whittingham on Darius Durham. Durham with a nice reception. Whittingham nailed him. This is the way a middle linebacker or Mike man should play his position. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, is taking his pass. He sees the action coming over the middle. Now watch this perfect, high, hard hit. Now this is one of the reasons that some receivers don't like to run routes like this to the inside. There is always a middle linebacker or Mike man like that waiting for you in there. And usually he outweighs you by 50 feet. Yes. Third down. 18 yards to go. Kopler looking downfield. Completes to Durham. It should be enough for the first down as Durham made a nice leaping reception inside the 35. Dave McKee hooked him out of bounds. Darius Durham, who came into today's game with 20 receptions, is going to be running a sideline cut. Now watch and see if we can see his move. He makes the move to the outside. That is a leaping catch, and you see some of the hand-eye coordination as he makes a great leaping catch along the sideline. It is not enough for a first down. I was looking at the wrong down marker, in fact. It is fourth down and eight. San Diego State is going for it to the delight of their fans. Fourth and eight. Kofler incomplete. Almost intercepted. Brady was back defending against the intended receiver, John Jessup, the tight end. BYU will take over on downs with 523 remaining in the second quarter, leading 21 to nothing. BYU takes over on downs here in the second quarter, leading 21 to nothing. They'll have the football at their own 33, first and 10. McMahon has been amazing so far, 179 yards passing. some more. Over the middle, complete to Scott Pettis out of the backfield, slips and goes down at the 45. Pettis may have been able to get a lot more had he gotten to the outside. Mark Coleman, number 40, covered him there. And we have a penalty on the play. It will be refused, I think. No, I think it's a hold against oh, it's the a hold. Oh, you're right. It is against the Cougars. Pat Flood, the referee, marking it off. Remember, this year there are two types of holding penalties. Like last year, there's the retreat block holding on passing plays, which is a five-yard infraction, and then there is the major penalty, which is illegal use of hands from the spot of the infraction. And that is the major penalty. 10-yard markup all the way back to about the 19-yard line. It is still first down. Carver, they marked off more than 10 yards. But it is from the spot of the foul. McMahon to Wayman Hamilton. Slips one tackler and gets to the 25. 51, Alan Dale, the junior from Escondido, California, made the tackle for San Diego State. 13 of 15 in the passing department for Jim McMahon. 185 yards and two touchdowns as he continues to assault the NCAA record. He owns 36 NCAA records coming into today's game. He has already added one more to his total. That's 37. What will it be like by the end of this afternoon? We'll know sometime tonight. That's right. Whenever the game ends. <laughs> Second down and 18. BYU with their own 25. The draw play, Pettis tripped up. Nice defensive effort by number 51 again, Alan Dale. Or Pettis might have gotten more yardage. This program, as usual, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. We'll pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. A penalty. 
Charlie Marker is down. There was a player shaken up for a moment for San Diego State as well, but he appears to be all right. Glenn Kozlowski was shaken up for BYU on the play, and he also appears to be all right. The penalty is again against the Cougars. Holding on the offense, 10 yards penalty. Still second down. Another 10 yard mark off against BYU for holding. Moves the football again back to the 19 yard line. Only this time it'll be second down and about 23 yards to go. I think you could safely say it was a passing situation. <laughs> a first and ten's a passing situation. That's right. Why wouldn't second and 23 or four? McMahon over the middle, complete the ball home at the 39 yard line. Not enough for the first down. But another nice reception, Vernon Dean again covering him on the play, along with number 45, Alvin Bush. You can see how San Diego State is mixing up their coverage. This time they go to only a three-man rush. They're dropping off eight. The zone coverage is obviously there. Ballholm running a perfect crossing route. This is one of the plays that's open in the zone defense because you see that he finds the seam over around the left hash mark. There's Bullholm on the sideline with his stats. McMahon now over 200 yards. We're still in the second quarter. Complete to Kozlowski, who makes a diving reception, but it's enough for the first down at the 46. Another nice catch by Glenn Kozlowski, who may have been shaken up on the play as he came down hard. First and 10 BYU. Dave Crodup was covering him on the play, but could do nothing about it. 3.05 remaining in the second quarter. The Cougars, another first and 10 at their own 46. McMahon really scatters that football around. He utilizes every conceivable element of this sophisticated passing offense, which was put together by Lavelle Edwards. Also, Doug Scoville, of course, when he was there as the offensive coordinator. McMahon fumbles the snap and falls on it himself for a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second down as he pulled back perhaps a little too quickly. Allendale 51 right there again. He may have been blitzing on the play. On top of that. Here he comes. Allendale, number 51. Is he blitzing? Yes, he is. That is a linebacker coming on the blitz. He sees the fumble. He goes right after the football, but Jim McMahon has already covered it. Loss of two on the play, back to the 44 of BYU. Two minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. 21-0, BYU. And now, BYU trying to call a timeout finally gets their attention. Two minutes exactly remain in the first half of play. We'll return to San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium for the final two minutes of the first half. A reminder as you look at Cosmo, the Cougar of BYU, coming up at halftime. <laughs> Our Fireman's Fund flashback today will be an interview with San Diego State's new head football coach, Doug Scoville. Mr. Grosscup handling that chore yesterday. Look at the yards passing. McMahon already with 2-12. Two, two minutes exactly remaining. Second down, 12 yards to go. McMahon flipping it out and completing it on the far sideline to Neil Ballholm, who is bumped out of bounds. Gets back the two they lost on the fumbled exchange. Dave Crota, 21, the junior out of Los Angeles, bumped him out of bounds. Well, there is no two-minute warning, per se, in college football, and, and you don't really need to worry about a two-minute or hurry-up offense with BYU because their whole offense is a two-minute offense, and they have a 60-minute, two-minute offense. That's right. Do you, do you want the credit on that? <laughs> it's a good line. That's a good, good Thank line. You. Thank you. Third down and 10. Little movement preliminary to the stats, to the snap. McMahon completes it to Wayman Hamilton. Hamilton cutting back and getting into San Diego State territory near the 46, but the penalty marker may be against the Aztecs once again for some premature movement. The clock stopping with 146, as you see, offside indicated against San Diego State. 146 remaining in the first half. Look at the shirts off, shorts, tank tops, short sleeves, and otherwise summery apparel here in the middle of October. Indigenous to this region, I'll say. Good crowd on hand, probably 45,000. Both bands will be performing at halftime. Our side 
on the defense. Still third. Pat Flood giving us the indication, moving the ball to the 49, or just really across midfield, right at the 50-yard line. Just into Aztec territory, third down, and about five and a half yards to go. 138 remaining in the half. Man looking long, firing long. Plater intercepted by Vernon Dean. Vernon Dean bringing it back upfield at the 30. Breaks another tackle. Run out of bounds at midfield. thrown at the end of the play on the near sideline when Vernon Dean was bumped out of bounds. That ball cover looked to be just a little bit underthrown. That is the first pass of the day that Jim McMahon has thrown poorly and a pass that he should not have thrown because he was moving to his left. He was falling away. He didn't have time to plant his foot and really set up. There's the dead ball foul, a personal foul, and it's indicated against San Diego State. Here's the play again. Later, as you see, running a down and in route here. Actually, you know, he's just running a straight streak or up pattern. And the ball, instead of being thrown to his outside, over the shoulder so that he can catch it, is thrown way inside as if he were expecting him to run a post route. And there is the man who we consider to be the best athlete on the defensive unit for the Aztecs, Vernon Dean, number 23, a transfer, Z, from United States International University after USIU uh, discontinued football in 1979. Here's the indication. Dead ball foul, personal foul, in San Diego, the first down this way, first and 25. Penalty occurring after the play, a 46-yard interception return on that play by Vernon Dean. And as you see, the penalty situation is even. Now a minute 14 remaining in the half. San Diego State trailing 21 to nothing. They have it now first and 10 at their own 38. Kofler and Matt's going to run it. Getting out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Stopping the clock with 109 remaining. Todd Schell, 47, a sophomore from Mesa, Arizona, running him out of bounds. Matt Kofer does not run like your typical quarterback. He's more of a boss. He is strong. Yeah. It is now second down and 17 yards to go. The ball at the 46. And as I mentioned, 109 left on the clock here in the second quarter. Flipping it over the middle of Darius Durham complete. And Durham is ahead to the 39 before he's hauled down. 15, Dave McKee, and 13, Steve Brady make the tackle in the secondary for BYU. Timeout called by the Aztecs. Timing pass to the wide receiver, number 88, Darius Durham. Watch, he is running a quick post or slant in route. Three steps back, and the ball is delivered right on cue. Now, that's where a slant in route should be thrown, low and right in stride like that. Because that way, he doesn't have to reach back and really get himself green. You get hit enough when you go yeah. over the middle. You're going to get creamed anyway. Why make it worse? <laughs> There's Darius Durham, number one receiver for the Aztecs, a junior from Garden Grove, California. And again, we remind you that college football, 81, tomorrow over most of these ABC stations, will have highlights of the games you see here for you. Your host, Bill Fleming. Be sure to check the local listings for the time and station in your area. College football 81 highlights of all those fine games for you tomorrow over most of these ABC stations. Those are some good games, I'll say. One minute and two seconds remaining in the first half as Kofler returns to the San Diego State huddle on third down and four. That, however, is not his major worry. His major worry is that he has 102 left and he trails 21 to nothing. Not that big a lead, though, with this type of an offense. Very true. Kofer, as you see, has been very effective throwing only one incompletion. He, too, is near 100 yards passing. Intended for John Jessup, the tight end incomplete. A little bit overthrown. Shell was defending on the play. Clock stopping with 58 seconds remaining in the half. It'll be fourth down and four yards to go from the 41 of BYU. This will be the second time the Aztecs have gone for it on fourth down. 
They play that kind of football. That's what Matt Kofler was telling us the other day. Is that he has a coach now who loves to see that scoreboard light up. And yet to do that today. Kofler being chased. Looking for a receiver. Finally, hold down. 48 or 47 yard line of San Diego State. Pulisila Filiungo was in there. Number 73. The last time we saw Pulley, he got a little upset with an official up in, <laughs> in Logan. That's for sure. Today he doesn't particularly like to remember. No. Here it is now, again. Now watch the scramble play right here by Matt Cooper. And if he could somehow look back to his left and locate Bull Williams. Bull Williams is so wide open over here that it's just unbelievable. But he's never going to get a chance to find him because he is under duress. BYU taking over on downs now at the Aztec 48. And San Diego State called a timeout to stop the clock with 49 seconds left in the half. Some bad news for the Aztecs. Thomas Carter has torn knee ligaments. He will have surgery later today. Sad. Thomas Carter, San Diego State linebacker. Unfortunately one of many who have suffered knee injuries. Do you want this one or shall I have it? <laughs> you got it. All right. <laughs> that's, that's what you call a blue chipper. <laughs> 49 seconds left in the half. Brigham Young leading San Diego State. 21 to nothing. The Aztecs having called the timeout in an effort to hopefully get the ball back for at least one more play before time runs out. They have one timeout remaining. McMahon is not going to stall around. And a penalty marker goes down as Vernon Dean hit the intended receiver right in the back. Dan Plater made the reception anyway, I believe just inside the 35. It'll be a first down for BYU plus a penalty. Dan Plater runs a perfect hook or curl in route. Now watch how precisely he makes his move right here. He plants his foot and sees the football and despite the fact that he's going to really get hit hard by Vernon D number 23. He climbed. It's a first down this way. They'll take the catch. It was a good call. Yeah, sure. They want the, the contact was premature, right? It was a good call, but it's also a, a smart move to decline the penalty because then McMahon and Plater get credit for the yardage. Just inside the Aztec 35, first down, 40 seconds remain in the half. Complete. Dan Plater again, running for the sideline. He will not make it. Cut down at about the 33-yard line. Number 44, Rick Boyer, a senior linebacker from Westminster, California, and 21, Dave Crodup made the tackle. Variation on a theme, Dan Plater this time running an under or shadow. They call this a shadow route because it's cleared out by the back, and the wide receiver comes underneath. And what Dan Plater is trying to do here is outrate three, outrate three Aztec defenders to the far sidelines. That's easy for you to say. I'll, I'll, I'll spit that out. <laughs> Outrace is the word I'm trying to say. He's trying to get out of bounds. Right. Plater now, as you see, three catches for 20 yards. 25 seconds now left in the half as BYU has called a timeout. McMahon now, 18 of 20, 230 yards in the first half alone. And two touchdown passes. Not too shabby. But we really shouldn't be surprised because he's done it nearly every single game he's played at BYU. Certainly every game that we have seen. We saw him twice. Uh, first game, this very game, against San Diego State. He threw four touchdown passes. The one that really broke their back in that game was an 80-yard touchdown pass to Clay Brown, his tight end, in the third quarter. And then, of course, the game we saw later against Utah State, he threw, uh, I think, for over 500 yards in that ball game. And that's the one that went on for about four and a half hours. Second down and about seven yards to go. 25 seconds left on the clock. In the first half, McMahon firing again. Intercepted by Vernon Dean. Vernon Dean with his second interception as he cut right in front of the intended receiver, Scott Colley, and hauled it in at the 14-yard line. 
Jim McMahon is going to learn that you do not underthrow your receiver when you're throwing in the area of Vernon Dean, number 23. This is the second bad pass that McMahon has thrown today, and it has been to the wrong side both times. He threw that ball behind the receiver. Vernon Dean was right there to step in front for his second interception of the day. He talked about the defensive back tradition at San Diego State. Here is another good one for the NFL. Hey, Pro Scouts, Vernon Dean, number 23. 19 seconds remain in the half. Kofler dropping back from his own 14-yard line, flipping it intended for Craig Ellis incomplete. Ellis coming out of the backfield. Kofler had a little pressure on him. Barry Oates, number 83, the right side defensive end right in his face. It'll be second down and 10, but more importantly, 15 seconds, as you see now, remain in the half. Hail Mary time. They would love to get something on the board, obviously, before halftime, trailing 21 to nothing. There was quite a Hail Mary in the Holiday Bowl here last year. Let's talk more about that after this play. This very stadium. Kofler looking for a long pass. Is it complete? Yes. At the 41-yard line, Craig Ellis came up with the reception. Juggled it for a second. The clock is now stopping with six seconds remaining. They have no timeouts left. And now what are they saying? It is not a reception. Apparently, one official has overruled the other. It looked like he did juggle the ball for a minute when he made the reception. And now they say that San Diego State has called a timeout. I didn't know they had any left. But anyway, there's still six seconds left on the clock. The ball is back at the 14-yard line as they have disallowed the catch by Craig Ellis. It'll be third down and 10. And barring a penalty, should be the last play of the half. San Diego State has moved the football. They just have not put any points on the board. They hurt themselves early with a fumble. But BYU recovered. They did miss a field goal earlier in the ball game in the first quarter. On a couple of other possessions, they have moved the ball into BYU territory. Here, however, things are looking bleak as far as scoring before the half, with the reception by Ellis being nullified, or rather disallowed. It is third and ten, still back at the 14. Six seconds to go. The clock, of course, will start on the snap. Ellis is going to sweep it. And run the clock out as he picks up a couple of yards to the 16. That's all. 59 Gunther of BYU will kick it off. Back deep to receive Phil Smith, number six, standing on his goal line for San Diego State. 21 to nothing. The Cougars out in front. Smith coming up to take the short kick at about the eight-yard line. Trying to find an opening. Scoots ahead to about the 23. First and ten, San Diego State at that point. I'm sure the Aztecs, Lee, are glad they're getting the football back as we take a moment to check the statistics from the first half of play. The Cougars dominating, really, in just about every statistical category. However, San Diego State, if you look at the bottom line, has had the football longer. And what that tells me is that the Cougars score quick. <laughs> they certainly do. They did on a couple of possessions. It is the Aztecs who have the football now. First and ten at their own 23. Kofler flips it over the middle. Incomplete intended for John Jessup, the tight end. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, was there defending. And the San Diego State fans would like an interference call. It'll be second down and ten still at the San Diego State 23. with Bull Williams behind him in the backfield. Don Roberts is set on a wing. And a run with it. Chased and hauled down. A gain of about five yards on the play. David Apu, number 44, 225-pound junior linebacker, made the stop. A gain of about five on the play. It'll be third down and five as the ball is out across the 28-yard line of San Diego State. 
Nothing has changed. Matt Kofler is going back to the airways. Ball control passing offense. You know the first guy I ever heard use that term? My old coach, Cactus Jack Curtis, back at the University of Utah, back in 1957. He was years ahead of his time when he was using that back in the 50s. And uh, when you were playing for him, you put it up a few times yourself. A couple. Third and five. Kofler standing in there. Can't find a receiver. He's hauled down. Four white shirts around him. 77, Mike Morgan. 59, Kyle Whittingham. 78, Chuck Ian. And... Uh, a few others. This may be your consummate Mike man right here, middle linebacker Kyle Whittingham, son of the defensive coordinator Fred Whittingham. And he's doing what he's done very effectively today, filling and blitzing. As we said at the very top of the show, this is a man with a nose for the football, and he will hit you. Fourth down and 11 following the loss of six. Mike Jeslin in the punt by Sikahima, the deep back to receive it. Nice punt by Jeslin. Sikahima at the 34. Looking for somewhere to go. Now just goes straight ahead. Almost loses the football. And is finally brought down at about the 43-yard line of BYU by Jerome Franey, number 30, and number 16, George Williams, a senior from right here in San Diego. Second game is kind of cute in the open field, isn't he? He's their best all-purpose back. He was impressive as a freshman last year. Mm -hmm. BYU's first possession of the second half, 13 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. They'll have a first and 10 at their own 44. McMahon with 230 yards passing in the first half. The draw play to Wayman Hamilton. Hamilton with a hole across midfield into Aztec territory at the 49, number 50, Bill Fairbrother, and number 51, Alan Dale, the two linebackers, combined for the stop. This is what a draw play looks like from the vantage point of an inside linebacker. And let's watch Dale again, who has been so effective today. That's the way you shut down the draw play. They did, however, gain about six and a half yards. It's third down and long three to go. The blitz is on, and McMahon is sacked from behind. Jerome Franey, the junior from Bakersfield, California, looping around the right side, hit McMahon from the blind side, and the loss is all the way back inside the 45 to the 43. You have heard the term blind side. In the life of every quarterback, there is always a blind side. McMahon is reading to his right first, then looking downfield. He does not see Franey, number 30, coming from his left. Now there, he sees him. <laughs> he feels him before With he the sees eye him. in the back of his head. Third down, 11 yards to go. BYU with their own 43. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. It was number 95, Hudson, the tight end. Number 27, Mike Fox, a junior safety man from Fontana, California, with a well-timed hit to prevent the completion. It'll be fourth and 11, and BYU will have to kick it away. Mike Mees, number one, averaging over 42 yards per kick on the season, is in. And dropping back for San Diego State, number 24, Gary Nobles, who's standing back around his own 10-yard line. Another nice hanging high punt. Fumbled. We'll see who fell on it. San Diego State came up with it. Gary Nobles fumbling that reception of the punt, but falling on it, covered immediately by Reagan Andrews, the man who snapped the ball. A 43-yard punt. We'll be back in just a minute. isn't for everybody but for me nothing beats you and here's the punt again by mike Mees. watch closely he may have been touched here don roberts 43 of san diego state bumping him a little now, bit. now if he were a little better in dramatics like some of these but he would have fallen That's down right. and screamed tried to take the penalty 
First and ten, San Diego State. The ball at their 16-yard line. Actually, the 17. Kofler. Nicely thrown ball to Phil Smith. He almost broke it. At the 44-yard line of San Diego State, Phil Smith making that catch right in front of Steve Brady, number 13. You've heard the term threading the needle. Watch this pass. Goes right between two BYU defenders. Phil Smith, number six, a converted quarterback in his wide receiver position, running a straight up route. The ball thrown to the inside right between two Cougars, and momentarily we thought that Smith was going for the distance. Neither Brady nor McKee, number 15, could make the tackle. It's first and ten, San Diego State, just inside their own 45. Over the middle, incomplete. Intended for his tight end, number 80, Jim Botro. Kevin Walker, number 14, was defending on the play. It'll be second and 10. Botro, a good one at that tight end position. Here's the comparative stats of the two quarterbacks today. Jim McMahon, coming into today's game, had thrown 156 passes without an interception. And now he has thrown two interceptions here in the in the first half second down and 10 San Diego State just inside their own 45 the fake to Roberts Kofler looking over the middle and deep incomplete intended for Darius Durham who was well covered number 15 Dave McKee got a hand on the football Kyle Morrell number five was also back there defending look at this matchup between McKee and Darius Durham along the right sideline Darius Durham Fakes a little bit to the inside, gives a juke, and now he's going to run a straight-up pattern. And watch how he is hound dog by McKee. McKee running with him, turning his head back to the inside, and then simply bats the ball down. Had he focused a little bit more, he might have had an interception. Perfect defense. However, you saw the safety man, Kyle Morrell, coming over to help out. Third down and 10. San Diego State at their own 45. Fogle. Steve Fogle breaks the tackle. Still fighting for yardage and very near a first down. He'll be short, I believe, by about a yard as he gets it into BYU territory at the Cougar 46. Kyle Morrell made the tackle in the secondary. The first time we've seen Steve Fogel, the 200-pound senior fullback from Huntington Beach. We want to remind you, coming up Tuesday night here on ABC, 6 Mountain and 5 Pacific, the World Series. The Yankees are in against either Montreal or Los Angeles. That to be decided tomorrow. The premier event in baseball, the World Series, here on ABC. They're going for it on fourth down, about a half a yard. They need to get across the 45. Fogel will not make it. He will lose yardage as the BYU defensive line. David Opu, number 44, the linebacker coming in. Kyle Whittingham, Brandon Flint. A bunch of white shirts really got in there quickly. Steve Fogel, the backup fullback to Bull Williams, tries to bull one himself, and he gets a greeting by the entire center of the BYU defensive line. They're fired up on the near sideline as BYU takes over on downs for the second time. It is first and ten Cougars just outside their own 45. They lead 21-0, 10-13 remaining in the third quarter. Firing again and completing on the far sideline to Dan Plater, who is bumped out of bounds, not before he picks up 12 yards and a first down at the 42 of the Aztecs. David Crota drove him out. I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback so calm when the blitz is on as Jim McMahon. We're isolated right now, of course, on Dan Plater, his favorite target, who's running a simple out pattern. Down 12 yards and break it to the sideline, and McMahon delivers the ball with perfect timing, just where a sideline pass should be thrown. First and 10, Cougars. The blitz is on. McMahon drops the football and falls on it. Back at the 48. Somebody reached in and grabbed his arm. Maybe it was Mike Vance, number 93. And caused McMahon to fumble the football, but he fell on it himself. And he got up limping a little bit on that knee brace. 
Neil Ballholm was so wide open on that play that, uh, well, he must have been 20 to 30 yards in the clear. That's because everybody was coming, and he was running a post pattern from his wide receiver spot. Look at the numbers now on Jim McMahon as he approaches another 300-yard game. Loss of six. Second down, 16. Over the middle, complete to Kozlowski, first down. Todd Seabaugh, number 53, and Dave Krodup, number 21, made the hit, but Kozlowski with another fine catch. Again, he's shaken up a little bit, but it's enough for a first down. Jim McMahon, again, straight drop back action. Good protection this time, only a three-man rush. Kozlowski, the wide receiver on the left, on a crossing route. And McMahon, again, threading the needle. Kozlowski, unfortunately, shaken up on the play. And hopefully that will not be a knee injury. I think he's hurt his back. He had a, a fall earlier in the ball game where he came down on his tailbone very hard, making a catch in which he was turning around a little bit. He does appear to be limping on that leg, but earlier he was stretching his back out on the sidelines a bit. It is first down, BYU. They're now at the 32-yard line of San Diego State. Nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. It's 21-0 Cougars. The Aztec defense really being put to the test. Scott Pettis, the ball carrier, gets a block and tries to get to the outside. Does and gets to the 25, inside the 25, near the 23 of San Diego State. Mike Fox, the safety man, number 27, ran him out of bounds. This is a good way to look at the sweep pattern from a different angle. You see Scott Pettis, who we've talked about, establishing a ratio with his pulling guard. And what he can do now is read the, the block of the guard. And I think, Z, if he might have been better to make a cut upfield. There was some pursuit from the inside, however, as you look at Pettis. And now McMahon. So you're speaking from the vantage point of an old running back. And I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> right. in terms of, of a quarterback who wants you to get that first down yardage. <laughs> you got to go where the folks aren't usually. That's right. When you're my size, you can go where they are. When you're Pettison's size, you need to go where they are. McMahon over the middle, complete. Tackled immediately by Vernon Dean is the tight end, Gordon Hudson. But Hudson has more than enough for the first down as he gets it inside the nine-yard line of San Diego State. That is a pass that BYU has worked to perfection over the last few years. Earlier in the day, they worked it for a 67-yard play, and it was really the first big play of the day for the Cougars. Gordon Hudson, 6'3 and a half, 224 pounds. Of course, he's filling in some very big shoes at that tight end position. Clay Brown, he was a great one. It is first and goal for Brigham Young University inside the nine-yard line of San Diego State. The blitz is on. McMahon beats it. Hudson, touchdown Cougars. Mike Fox had a hold of Hudson right after the reception, but the strength of the big tight end pulled him into the end zone. At 225 pounds and 6'4", Gordon Hudson. Short out or pickoff pattern to the tight end. Y out, Z in. You want to get into a little rhetoric. And there he is, really reaching a good second effort by Hudson as he stretched and pulled his man to the end zone. Kurt Gunther on to attempt the extra point. No good. That's only the third extra point he's missed all year, and he's kicked well over 30. The score remains 27 to nothing in favor of Brigham Young over San Diego State. Will return to San Diego in a moment. Gordon Hudson, an eight-yard touchdown pass from Jim McMahon, has made it 27 to nothing in favor of the Cougars. As now Gunther will kick it off one more time, and Phil Smith is again back deep to receive for San Diego State, number six. Another good kick by Gunther. Smith will not have an opportunity to return this one as it is well past the end zone. And once again, here's a look at the touchdown pass. Gordon Hudson is running a short out or, or arrow pattern from his tight end position. And you see it creates sort of a pickoff effect. He comes right off the tail of his wide receiver. Now watch the effort right here as he stretches and pulls for the end zone. 
Great second effort. That made it 27 to nothing. And that was Jim McMahon's 68th career touchdown pass. And that is only a three year. That's not even three full years yet. Yep. First and 10, San Diego State at their own 20. Needless to say, they need to move the football and do it quickly. Kofler under pressure. Whittingham hauls him down again. Kofler may be hurt as he gets up rather slowly. Appears to be all right now. Brandon Flint was also in there, but Whittingham has just been outstanding. We talked earlier in the week to both coaches, and uh, Lee, they said San Diego State was talking really about doing more blitzing than BYU was, and here it's been the Cougars that have been most effective with the pressure. I don't necessarily think they've done any more. I just think, as you said, they've been more effective with it. They've been getting a good rush not only from the linebackers, but a good effort out of their front four. They're one of the few teams that still uses a 4-3 defense. Second down and 16. Flint again putting pressure on Kofler, who can't find anybody open, so he's going to run with it. And he gets it back across the 20, out near the 23 or 4 yard line. Number 93, Brad Anai, a senior from Hawaii, and number 35, Mike O'Neill, junior from Hussey in the Heights, California, made the tackle. And Matt Kofler has really had some problems finding receivers and getting on track. Kyle Whittingham, look at here. Now, he really, this is all in a day's work for a middle linebacker. First of all, he has to defense against the pass. So he takes his drop to about 15 yards. He watches Kofler. He sees that now he is going to run the football. He never lets himself get too far off balance. And finally, he comes up, and he's the first man who makes the contact on Matt Kofler. On third down and about seven, Kofler firing it incomplete, intended for Darius Durham. It went in and out of his hands. Kyle Morrell gave him a little shot after the fact. <laughs> Tom Holmo was there defending on the play. It'll be fourth down and about six yards to go. And San Diego State once again will have to give up the football, something they do not want to do. Not with Jim McMahon approaching another 300-yard game. Should he achieve that, which he is liable to do maybe on the next series, he will then become, well, he'll just add another record to his book. Currently, he and Mark Wilson are tied for career 300-yard games. There's my second. He now has 282 yards. Excuse me, sir. sir. Mike Jeslin just does get it away. They knock him down, and a penalty marker will be thrown as the punt goes out of bounds near midfield. Roughing the kicker will be the call against the Cougars of BYU, and the Aztecs of San Diego State will retain possession. There were three or four white-shirted defensive players in there, as you see. Let's see what kind of an acting job Joslin does here. Now, we talked about this a moment ago, how hunters should have this as a prerequisite, that they all take drama. Now, you, you fall down and you scream. I don't think he needed to. I, don't, I think that was real. Yeah, Kevin Walker, number 14, was the first guy to get there, but then a couple of more Cougars ran into him, including John Ramage, number 49. Ruffing the kicker on the first down. That moves the football out to the 39 of San Diego State and gives the Aztecs a much-needed first down. Six and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter, 27 to nothing in favor of Brigham Young. Kofler faking, firing over the middle of the tight end. Jessup, nice catch. Jessup into BYU territory, down to the 37, before he's hauled down by Dave McKee in the secondary. Nice little fake, Lee, and a nice reception by Jessup. Sensational catch by number 87 tight end John Jessup. Watch, play action pass, and he's dumping it right over the linebacker's head. A high-reaching, bobbling, juggling catch by number 87 Jessup. A big play for the Aztecs. They're back knocking at the door. This program, of course, a special exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. We'll pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Completing that pass to Steve Fogel coming out of the backfield again. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, made the tackle. The gain is about four to the 34. It'll be second down and six. They dump the ball off to their fullbacks. We saw Bull Williams do it earlier. Steve Fogel, another one of those little bowling ball types, 5'8", 200 pounds. And Bull Williams is back in the backfield now. Second and six. Quarterback draw. Kofler, nice move. 
close to the first down as he gets it near the 27. Kevin Walker, number 14, the junior from Salt Lake City, made the tackle. Whittingham got in on the play again, Lee. This is what it looks like when you're the middle linebacker and you have to read draw play. He sees now that it's a quarterback draw. He only goes back about three steps. And now, look at this. This is when you have two guys taking shots at you in the open field and you still have to be responsible for making the tackle on the quarterback who's running a quarterback draw play. Good move also by Matt Kofler. As we said, he is not your typical running quarterback. He's a strong guy. He's not afraid to put his nose in there. The measurement shows that it is, in fact, enough for a San Diego State first down, just outside the 27 of BYU. The Aztecs mounting one of their few scoring threats. First down! See the board light up? How about that? Kofler under pressure again, runs out of the pocket. Breaks another tackle, dives inside the 20 to the 18. Picking up good yardage before Pulisila Filiunga. Number 73 hauls him down. The gain is to the 19. Look at this effort by Matt Kofler. Now, he's not only a good runner, but he's getting smart. Watch what he does at the end of this run. He sees a lot of company coming, and he takes a little dive here. <laughs> Next thing we know, you'll be doing the hook slide. <laughs> You can see from that graphic that most of that yardage has been lost in attempting to pass. Second down and two. Wolfler under some pressure again, dumps it off. Complete at the 15 or 16 yard line. Two receivers, Steve Fogel was one of them. He did not catch the football. It appears that the tight end, 87 John Jessup, made the reception in a crowd. Coming up Sunday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the New York City Marathon. You'll see it for the first time ever. Complete coverage from start to finish. That's Sunday, next Sunday on ABC, the New York City Marathon. Be sure to check the local listings for the time in your area. First down, San Diego State at the 16 of BYU. Four minutes, five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Kofler slips and falls back outside the 20-yard line at about the 23, covered there by Mike Morgan, number 77, a 260-pound junior defensive tackle. That was near perfect coverage in the secondary that time by BYU. You cannot see it here, but why Kofler is taking so much time is because everyone is perfectly covered. The, the protection is good momentarily, and then ultimately you see it breaking down, but he had, he had more than three or four seconds there to get the ball off. They cannot hold forever. So I would not discredit the protection on that play. I would instead credit the coverage by the BYU secondary. You saw Lavelle Edwards. He's won 80 games in 10 seasons at BYU. Gopher on the bootleg, running all the way. Inside the 15, breaks another tackle inside the 10-yard line. Touchdown! Kofler told us yesterday that he grew up as a running back and eventually switched to quarterback in high school and junior college, but he has instincts as a runner. This is not your typical passing quarterback. He is a quarterback who likes to throw the football, but he likes to run the ball just about as well. He's on the bootleg play, and he pulls the ball down real early here, makes his move to the outside. Now watch this cut. That is not a quarterback cut. That is a running back cut. And then he heads toward the end zone. That is north and south running. Brian Skade threw a great block at the goal line to get him in as Dave Meyer makes the extra point with 3.07 remaining in the third quarter. Meyer's extra point makes it 27-7 BYU. The crowd has really come to life here in San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium as the Aztecs with a nice drive finally get on the board. Dave Meyer, the junior kicker, set to kick it off. Sikahima 23, one of the deep backs, back to receive along with Bruce Hansen 34. Line drive kick into a slight breeze. Sikahima has to pick it up across the 15-yard line. 
Good coverage by San Diego State as Baisakahima took some time to pick that ball up. Let's look at Kofler's fine run from that touchdown for the Aztecs. We've got some kind of matchup going here today in terms of total offense between two great quarterbacks. Matt Kofler on a bootleg play. The last touchdown turns the corner. Watch these two cuts. One, two. Now watch this. He knows where the end zone is. That, those are the instincts of a former running back, number 10, Matt Kofler. That was a 24-yard run by Kofler. And you see the scoring drive there, 80 yards and 10 plays. BYU first and 10 at their own 16. McMahon predictably putting it up again, incomplete. Intended for Pettis coming out of the backfield. It was a forward pass, and it will be an incompletion. It'll be second and 10 at the 16. Important defensive series right now for the Aztecs. They want the momentum to stay in their direction. Jim McMahon now 22 of 28 in the passing department. We are going to be choosing a most valuable player on behalf of Chevrolet. And right now the obvious front runner for BYU is Jim McMahon. That's no upset. He's been our Chevy player on two previous occasions. Matt Kofler having quite a day for San Diego State. Chevy players to be announced before the game is over. On second and 10, McMahon over the middle, incomplete again intended for Dan Plater. Number 50, Bill Fairbrother, along with number 21, Dave Crodup, were both there as Plater could not make the reception. It'll be third down and 10, still at the 16-yard line of BYU. Here it is again. Dan Plater, the favorite receiver of Jim McMahon, running what's known as a shadow route, meaning that he comes underneath the coverage. He never and saw the ball, Lee. He, he wasn't looking for the he pass. Was not looking for the pass, and Fairbrother gave him quite a greeting. Third down and ten. McMahon to Pettis. Will not have the first down as he's knocked down immediately. Vernon Dean and number 45, Alvin Bush, a junior out of East St. Louis, were both there. The gain is only two yards. It'll be fourth down and eight from about this 18 yard line. Big, big defensive series for the Aztecs. Don't go away, anybody. This game is far from over. 27 to 7, and that can turn around in no time. That score really appeared to fire up the defensive unit of San Diego State. Yep. Now, BYU will have to punt it away. Mike Mees, number one, is in the punt. Gary Nobles has dropped back deep, number 34, inside his own 35. Another fine punt by Meads. Nobles at the 36. Hauled off his feet by number 49, John Ramage, who was down there very quickly. Ramage, a junior from Orem, Orem, Utah, with a fine tackle. That's a great effort by Ramage. Watch this effort by Ramage, because if he doesn't make this tackle, the wall is there. Watch this effort. Good high, hard hit. It's almost the old clothesline tackle. Right? They mark it at the 43 of San Diego State as you look at Ramage on the near sideline. 158 remaining in the third quarter. 27 to 7 BYU leading. San Diego State, first and 10. Complete to Jessup on the tight end screen. Jessup with a few blockers in front of him. Fall down. Tom Holbo, number 46, the junior defensive back made a great play to come through the interference and prevent what could have been a big gain for the Aztecs. Tight end screen. I like it. Multiplicity and flexibility really the keys to Doug Scoville's offense. So sophisticated and yet Matt Kofler told us yesterday that it also has simplicity. He said it, it is sophisticated but everything is clearly defined. The gain is two. Second down and eight from the 46. Kofler over the middle. Intended for Steve Fogle, and if David Apu had been looking, he could have picked off that pass as it bounced off Fogle. You know, it's interesting because I just used the terms multiplicity and flexibility. And one year I was at Harvard talking to Joe Restig as he was drawing up plays, and I started talking about the multiplicity and flexibility of his offense. And the next time I came back to cover the team, I noticed that they had named their offense the multiplex. I said, how did you do that? I said, well, as a matter of fact, you inadvertently gave our offense its name. Well, that's a good description, I must admit. Third down, eight yards to go. 
The Aztecs from their own 46. Penalty marker is down as Kofler completes the pass at the 41-yard line of BYU. Number 82, Anthony Kelly, a junior wide receiver from right here in San Diego. But remember, there is a penalty marker down. Offsides against BYU. It appeared as if number 93, Brad and I, the defensive end, may have jumped prematurely. If that is the case, obviously, San Diego State would decline the penalty. Let's listen to referee Pat Flood as he gives us the indication. Offside on the defense. Decline. First down. At the 41-yard line of BYU, first and 10. 109, remaining in the third quarter. 27-7 BYU. The Aztecs really coming back here in the third quarter. On first and 10. The pitch is to Don Roberts. Roberts held up in the backfield. Gets away and gets back to the line of scrimmage and may have picked up a couple of yards. Kevin Walker, number 14, was blitzing and met Roberts shortly after he took the pitch. But Roberts was able to get away. That might be the greatest short run I have seen this year. Watch this effort. I'm not talking about first and second effort here. I'm talking about third and fourth effort by the tailback, Roberts, number 43. Now watch this. Here is a log kick. Look at this. He's hit once there, twice there. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. He's still up. He's still on his feet. He's still churning. Great effort by Roberts, number 43, the tailback. They never did get him down. He gained two yards at second down and eight at the 39 of BYU. Fake to Roberts. Bootleg again by Kofler. The play he scored on dragged out of bounds inside the 35 by Todd Shell, number 47. It will not be enough for a first down, but the game will be to about the 33. It'll be third down and about two and a half yards to go. As you see, 13 seconds remain in the third quarter. Big down right here. This could be maybe the crucial down of the day for San Diego State. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a philosophy they apply right here. They're the type of team, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for the whole load right now, but more than likely they will try some type of a spread out pass where you can utilize uh, Kofler applying pressure to the corner. But we're going to have to wait until the fourth quarter as time has run out. 27-7 BYU and NCAA college football will continue after this commercial message as well as a word Lavelle Edwards, the dean of Western Athletic Conference coaches only. Frank Cush has more whack wins. And guess what? He's not there anymore. Doug Scoville already turning the program around here at San Diego State. The architect of quarterbacks, former offensive coordinator for Lavelle Edwards. Third down, two and a half yards to go. Could be the biggest play of the game so far for the Aztecs. Quarterback draw. Kofler will not get it. Kyle Whittingham, 59, hit him first. Then it was 77, Mike Morgan, and 78, Chuck Ian, all there. It'll be fourth down. The loss is a yard or so, fourth and about four. Here are the third quarter statistics. That is indicative right there of the way that San Diego State is closing the gap. Look how much closer this is now than it was at halftime. We're just into the fourth quarter, 27-7, BYU leading, San Diego State going for it on fourth and four. Kofler flipping it incomplete, intended for Bull Williams coming out of the backfield, and he was covered by Todd Shell. BYU will take over on downs for the third time this afternoon at their own 34. I would have to question those last two calls. I don't like either one of them particularly. With a quarterback like Matt Kofler, I think the best thing to do is sprint him out to the, the corner flood a zone, give him three immediate receivers or the option to run, and I would have done it twice. I would have to agree with you. I don't think that that was the call to make. They had two chances to make the yardage, and they didn't do it. It may come back to haunt them as we are in the fourth quarter. Just a straight dive handoff into the line by BYU. Perhaps a yard gained on the play is all. Taking a long time to unpile. Scott Pettis, the ball carrier. Jeff Morgan with the nose guard was the last guy up. 
One of the few times all day long Jim McMahon has called a running play on first and ten. First right. and ten, normally a passing down for the Cougars. Now it is second and eight from the 36 of BYU. Plenty of time. Now it breaks down. McMahon loses a football. But BYU has recovered. Number 63, Calvin Close, the offensive guard and perhaps their best all-around offensive lineman with a big play. That ball was free for a long time, and it looked like there were nothing but black shirts there. This could have been a great break for the Aztecs. Jim McMahon right here. Let's see where the ball is, is hit. There it is. There it is right there. There's Jeff the Morgan. And it appears momentarily, as you said, that it was surrounded by black jerseys and that indeed the Aztecs would have a big break and a possible uh, possible touchdown field position. Jeff Morgan reached through and knocked the ball out of McMahon's hands, but Calvin Close, the offensive guard for BYU, came up with it. It is now third down and 20 to go. McMahon looking long, knocked down, intended for Dan Plater. Vernon Dean again with an excellent defensive effort. I don't think I'd throw any more in his area if I were Jim McMahon. He is a player. He has been there every time. 12 minutes and 40 seconds remain in the game. It's fourth down, and BYU will have to kick it away on fourth and 20. Mike Knees, number one, into the game. Gary Nobles, number 24, has dropped back. There is Gary. Standing inside is 30. San Diego State with just one safety man back. They may be going after this one. Nope, they're holding him up. Mies gets off a wobbly kick that lands at the 45 and bounds towards San Diego State territory. Covered there by BYU. Number 94, Mark Walker, was down there very quickly to pick that ball off. Twelve and a half minutes remaining in the football game. Only a 27-yard punt. San Diego State with good field position. Along with Lee Grosscup back at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. We have 12 and a half minutes remaining. And now good field position and the ball back in San Diego State possession. The Aztecs trailing 27 to 7. They have the ball at their own 49. The Aztecs have not thrown deep on first down. They have the field position. Let's see if they do. Gopher may have been audibleizing as he took a lot of time. Dumps it off over the middle of Craig Ellis out of the backfield. Ellis with a nice move. Has the first down at the 40-yard line at BYU. David Opu, number 44, made the tackle, but not before Craig Ellis, the senior tailback from Los Angeles, with some good running, picks up a first down. He looked deep, but he threw short and wisely because the blitz was coming, the pressure was coming. There's Craig Ellis, number 18. We talked about his athletic ability. There is the one guy that they feel is a game breaking type back for them first and 10 San Diego State at the BYU 40 Bach batted down at the line of scrimmage and intercepted picked off from the secondary number 35 Mike O'Neill Chuck Ian number 78 got a big hand up and batted that ball out of the air O'Neill coming up with a diving interception let's watch for the tip there it is. Now here comes O'Neill. Good concentration right there. Diving interception for the Cougars. And that's really a spoiler for the Aztecs. They had the field position they wanted. The BYU defense has really been one of the keys today. They have controlled the line of scrimmage and they have capitalized on some turnovers to give the ball back to their offense. First and 10 BYU. Wayman Hamilton could not hold on. It's incomplete. Right at the line of scrimmage, the 39-yard line, number 21, Dave Crotip, junior defensive back, covering on the play. There's the turnover situation. The two for San Diego State have hurt them a lot more than the three for BYU. Two of those three interceptions by Jim McMahon, and they didn't hurt at all. They just come right back. The defense really has risen to the occasion. In the fourth quarter with just under 12 minutes remaining. 27-7, Brigham Young leading San Diego State. Second and 10 from the 39. Lots of time for McMahon. Complete to Scott Culley. Culley at the 41 of San Diego State. Vernon Dean again makes the tackle, but not before 
It's another big gainer for BYU and another first down in Aztec territory. Vernon Dean, one of the great defensive backs uh, for San Diego State. Watch him on the coverage, backpedaling here. Now he sees the cut. He sees the, the play going to the inside. And there is the catch. And guess who's there? Vernon makes the tackle that again. That means that Jim McMahon with that completion is now over the 300-yard mark. More to come. Wayman Hamilton on the draw play, can't get away. Bill Fairbrother, number 50, was right there to meet him in the hole, along with number 51, Alan Dale. Those two inside linebackers continuing to play outstanding football for San Diego State. Draw play, the big running play for both the Cougars and the Aztecs. And you know what? I get the feeling that these two teams have each other scouted pretty well. Did you, did you ever get that feeling? Well, with the... Uh, Doug Scoville coming over here from BYU. I think that they would know each other quite well. What to expect? Second down, 16 yards to go. McMahon firing over the middle, incomplete, intended for Glenn Kozlowski. And the freshman tried to pull off another great catch again, but couldn't come up with it. Jim McMahon has added another NCAA record. Are you ready? 14 career 300-yard passing and total offense games. He was tied with a, a former BYU player, Mark Wilson. His former teammate. Yeah. There you see what he's done today. Over 300 yards, 24 out of 34. Offensively, he's the story week after week for the Cougars. Remember, he was out the last two weeks, and last week they were beaten by Nevada Las Vegas. Third down. 16 yards to go. The draw to Scott Pettis. He goes nowhere. Wrapped up by number 91, Steve Ullman, the nose guard, 235-pound senior with excellent reactions. It'll be fourth and 16, and BYU will have to punt the ball back to San Diego State. Number one, Mike Knees into the game. There's Mike. Gary Nobles, as usual, has dropped back number 24 to receive, standing about his own 10-yard line. Mies will be punting into a slight win. Plenty of time as San Diego State gets back for the return. What a beautiful kick. A high one, bounding and going into the end zone just barely as Mies tried to hit the coffin corner. That ball was, ball was in the air for a long time. A 49-yard punt. It'll be first and 10 San Diego State at their own 20-yard line. They trail 27-7 with 9.50 remaining. Behind every schlitz is a man who knows his beer. The people in St. Louis know their beer. But as a master brewer, Schlitzer. thank you. I know one taste of my schlitz can change a lot of minds. And now more people know. I like Schlitz better than Bud. I'm a Miller drinker, but you have to taste Schlitz to believe it. Mr. Sillinger, your Schlitz tastes good. It's a good tasting beer. Here's to it. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. People ask me, what spark from? <laughs> Be sure to be with us Tuesday night for the World Series beginning Tuesday night right here on ABC. The color and the pageantry of NCAA college football and the lovely California girl. First and 10 San Diego State at their own 20-yard line, trailing 27-7 with 9.50 remaining in the game. Kofler looking long over the middle. But he couldn't hold on, and it falls incomplete. BYU had that play well covered, and it looked like Kofler threw a bit of a floater then. We had one person running the wrong route. We had two people coming up the sideline. One receiver should have been to the post, and the a trailing back should have been coming up the sidelines. It was called a, a bootleg throwback or waggle throwback, and sometimes you get a guy open along the sidelines back here. Kofler threw the ball to the post, and all he saw were a bunch of cougars in there. It is now second down and 10. Kofler again, avoiding the pressure, throwing long down the far sideline, overthrown, 
intended for Phil Smith, number six, back deep, defending Dave McKee, number 15. It'll be third and 10, still at the Aztec 20. First time we've really seen uh, Kofor throw deep. He can throw deep. I'd say his range is about 60 yards. We've seen him put a few up to Darius Durham on film. That's the first time today he's really hauled back and thrown one deep. There are the numbers on Kofler. 15 of 27 in the passing department. He has also contributed as a runner, scoring their only touchdown on a bootleg around the right side. This time, twin wide receivers are set out to the left side. Third and 10 from the 20. Draw play to Paul Williams, tripped up at the line of scrimmage. David Opu, number 44, submarining underneath with a fine defensive play. As it looked like, Mo Williams had a hole, but David Opu closed it very quickly. It'll be fourth down, six yards to go. San Diego State will have to give up the football with 9.20 remaining in the game. I personally don't like the draw play on third and long yardage. To me, it's a give up play. I think on third and long yardage, you've got to put the ball upfield at least as far as the desired distance for the first down. Especially with the receivers they have and the success they've had throwing the ball. Mike Jeslin, you see there, the punter. Sikahima, number 23, is back deep to receive it. With the wind, a nice punt. Deslin drives Sikahima inside the 30 to the 26. Looking for a wall to the outside, and Sikahima runs inside his blocker and virtually right in to a defender. Robbie Chapman, number 28, and number 83, Scott Bramage down there defending. A 49-yard punt. 8.45 remaining in the game. We'll return to San Diego after this message. How do you get good gas mileage? Citation and Arriva. Toyota and Arriva. Links. Here we are in our maze of wires and electronic gear, along with our spotter, Bill Friel, our statistician, John Butera, Steve Zabriskie, along with Lee Groskup at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. We're in the fourth quarter. BYU has the lead in the football, 27-7. First and 10 from their own 27. Neil Ballholm almost made a great catch. Vernon Dean again defending on the play to break it up. And what coverage Vernon Dean has been able to afford for the San Diego State defense today. I would not throw the sideline route on Vernon Dean at this particular point in the contest. I would have to question that logic. That is not where I would want to throw the out pattern if I was going to throw it. Even when he hasn't broken up the pass, he's made almost every tackle in the secondary after a completion. He's been everywhere. 8.40 remaining in the contest. Second down, 10 yards to go from the BYU 27, the pitch to Scott Pettis. Trying to get outside, he cannot. Number 30, Jerome Franey, junior linebacker, made the tackle. There will be a loss on the play, back to the 26, a loss of about two yards. Third down and 12. Do not go away. Remember that it was Doug Scovel who was the offensive coordinator when we had the Miracle Bowl right here in San Diego. Would you like to tell the folks what the Miracle Bowl was? <laughs> the Holiday Bowl game between the Brigham Young Cougars and the SMU Mustangs on which BYU scored on a 40-plus yard pass play on the last play of the game to win it. You got it. McMahon to Clay Brown. McMahon over the middle completes it at the 30-yard line and tackled immediately. Number 50, Bill Fairbrother, was defending on the play. The pass complete to Neil Ballholm, number 89. It is not enough for the first down, however. So just to amplify on that for a moment, BYU scored 21 points in the last four minutes against SMU, culminating with a Hail Mary pass from Jim McMahon to Clay Brown, who caught the ball with no time remaining. Unbelievable finish. They called the last four minutes the Miracle Bowl. Actually, it was the Holiday Bowl, Holiday Bowl 3. 24 is Gary Nobles as Mike Mees again is on the punt for BYU. Good rush. Mees gets it away, however. Mees, San Diego State has it first and 10 at their own 29. And, Lee, this is really a critical series of downs if they have any hope to win this football game. Make or break drive for the Aztecs. It's right here and it's right now. Kofler, a short drop, dumps it off over the middle and complete. But for very short yardage to Craig Ellis out of the backfield, a gain of perhaps three or four yards. They mark it out past the 32, near the 33. 
It'll be second down, about six to go. Todd Shell, 47, made the tackle. Clock running with less than seven minutes remaining. 27 to 7, BYU over San Diego State. Remember, we will be announcing the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player for each team in whose name a $1,000 scholarship will be awarded from Chevrolet to his school's general scholarship fund. Kofler eludes the pressure and run out of bounds on the far side by Barry Oates, number 83, the junior from Albany, New York. Loss on the play of a couple of yards back to the 31. And we want to remind you, coming up, next on the West Coast only, Wide World of Sports will be showing you the great fight between Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns. That's at 5 Pacific time, following our ball game here for the West Coast only. Those of you in the Mountain and Central time zones, of course, have already seen it. All right. <laughs> that was a big punch out. 6.30 remaining in the football game. Third down, seven yards to go. Belfler throwing long, knocked down, number 15. Dave McKee was back defending and knocked that ball down along with Steve Brady, intended for Clint Sampson, number 17, and we have a player down and injured, and it might be McKee, it is. Number 15, Dave McKee appears to have injured his arm or hand after knocking that pass down, let's look at it again. McKee, who we isolated on earlier, and we noted that he is doing an outstanding job on individual coverage. Now watch how he reads it. He's backpedaling first. He has his head turned to the inside. He goes up for the football, and he appears to come down. And I think he's holding his right arm there, Z. There you see him walking off, being attended to. Could be a shoulder, could be yep, arm, elbow, lots of things. Stopping with 624, as you see, remaining in the game. It is fourth down and about eight yards to go. As McKee comes off now, maybe shaking off. You know what happens sometimes, Lee, when you get a blow at the point of the shoulder or the elbow, your arm goes numb. Yeah, I've had you just, happen. You just hit a nerve and your arm will go numb, and then in a little while it'll come back and yeah. it'll be all right. It's scary, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> also, it hurts. Fourth down and eight. Mike Jeslin handles the low snap. Gets off a line drive shot by Sikahima at the 30. Trying to get to the wall. Gets the block. Finally hauled down inside San Diego State territory near the 48-yard line by Robbie Chapman, number 28, a senior from South Pasadena, California. Nice return by Sikahima. But Jeslin got a low snap and really got off a line drive kick that kind of outkicked the coverage a bit. A 22-yard punt return. Barring another miracle ball, I would say it's safe to say now that, that BYU appears to be in control of this football game. They may have wrapped it up. They seem to have things well in hand. They have a first and ten, a lead of 27 to 7, and they're in Aztec territory. Too tall, intended for Neil Ballholm on the far side. Again, it was Vernon Dean defending on the play. Clock stopping with 6.14 remaining. We've talked about this defensive player, Vernon Dean, and watch him on the individual coverage of Baldholm number 89, who's running a simple out route. About a five-yard cut, quick out pattern. The ball, as Steve Zabriskie so aptly put it, is too tall. But once again, look at the coverage by number 23, Vernon Dean. I would say he's our front runner for Chevy player for San Diego State. Second down and 10 from the 49 of San Diego State. McMahon over the middle, in and out of the hands of Kozlowski, who may have lost the ball in the sun. The angle of that pass was right in direct line with the sun. Alvin Bush was defending on the play, but a penalty flag has been dropped in the BYU, in the BYU backfield. It appears to be against the Cougars from the preliminary indication of referee Pat Blood. Jim McMahon. 38. You know, that is NCAA so incredible to me. <laughs> you know, to, to hold one NCAA record feels absolutely magnificent. I once had my name in the NCAA record book for one, one record. Oh, it's not there anymore. But for one season, I had my name in the book, and I felt good about it. For one, to, well, have, you one should. Record, to have one record. You should. Let's listen to Pat Flood, the referee, as he gives us the call. Offensive holding. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. A 10-yard mark off 
the major holding penalty now in college football. Back to the 20, or rather the 34. Really closer to the 33. Take your pick. Some of the fans still catching the Rays here in San Diego this afternoon. Second down, 28 yards to go. Remember the penalty marked off from the spot of the infraction. Penalty marker is down again. Short gain to the 35-yard line by Wayman Hamilton. 71, Kevin Ritchie appeared to have jumped too early. And that is the indication offside against San Diego State. Well, we're going to trade penalties here with 5 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the game. There's the penalty situation for both teams. Really, it's been a relatively error-free game as we get the call again. Defense, offsides, still second down. Second and now 23 yards to go for BYU. The ball with their own 38. Hamilton, the lone setback behind McMahon. Kozlowski going in motion. Scott Colley wide open. Bush chasing him and runs him out of bounds. Alvin Bush was beat on the play by Scott Colley. Although he was beaten, he was able to run him out of bounds inside the 30-yard line of the 29 of San Diego State. Touch and timing. Watch this. Watch how this ball is laid up before Colley is even out of his break. And that ball is put out there so nicely that Colley doesn't even have to break stride. That ball, he could not have been thrown any better than that. Scott McMahon continues to amaze me, frankly. I said earlier, I think he should have gotten the Heisman Trophy last year. Maybe he'll still get a shot at it this year. If he keeps up the way he is, he would certainly deserve it. Scott Pettis running the sweep. It's a block on the corner and cuts it upfield, diving inside the 20-yard line. Fine second effort by Scott Colley, who gets it to the 20 for a gain of nine, before number 27, Mike Fox, bumps him out of bounds, along with 51, Alan Dale. It'll be second down and one. The ball right on the 20-yard line. You saw the clock, 527 remaining in the game. BYU controlling the football and the contest at this point. They led 21-0 at halftime, and it was 27-7 after three quarters. It is still 27-7 with 527 to play. On second and one, Wayman Hamilton appears to have the first down as he fights his way through defenders to pick up two or three yards. Todd Seabaugh, number 53, one of the first defenders to get to him in the backfield, but Hamilton got away from him and picked up the first down. Hamilton, a sophomore from Calipatria, California, 220-pounder. And apparently... It's close enough to measure. Scoping in. And it is a first down for BYU. The ball inside the 19-yard line. The Cougars threatening to add to their lead here late in the ball game. And the pressure has been on San Diego State's defense since the very beginning. First and ten. Plater going split wide to the left. And ball home to the right. McMahon dumps it off to Pettis out of the backfield. Pettis breaks one tackle and gets near the ten-yard line. Hit initially by Franey, number 30, and then number 51, Alan Dale, finished him off. You can see that pad on the left side hip of Scott Pettis that's taped to the outside of his uniform. He suffered a hip pointer injury last week against Nevada Las Vegas. That's just a little extra protection for a very tender bruise on the hip bone. Four minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the game, and now whistles and a stoppage of the clock. Hip pointers are not fun. Do you ever have one of those? Oh, yeah. yeah. As a running back, you get them quite often because you get tackled with a shoulder pad right on the point of that hip bone. And 
Even though you wear pads there, sometimes the blow's hard enough to give you a bone, a bruise over the bone there. Look at McMahon's stats. They just continue to pile up. Jim McMahon is back. Hyperextended left knee, missed two games. Acts yep. like he never been away. That's right, and we never saw the shotgun today. At least so far, they haven't had any reason to use it. His mobility has been fairly good. Second down, three yards to go. Pettis again. Has the first down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. 51, Allen Dale again making the tackle for San Diego State. 4.38 remaining in the game. BYU driving it inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal at the concern. Here's the way the scoring went. Wayman Hamilton. standing there with arms folded the BYU head coach on first and goal McMahon little timing pattern to Plater cannot get it overthrown as Plater was covered once again by Vernon Dean and looking back into the sun tough place to throw that quick up pattern is right over there over Vernon Dean here is the route, however, by number 86, Dan Plater, and look who is with him step for step. Number 23, Vernon Dean. However, the ball was, was well thrown by McMahon. If you're going to throw that ball, never underthrow it to the inside. That is the key. Well, that's for sure, because it'll be picked off and returned for some big yardage. Second down and goal, again from the eight-yard line. Again, McMahon wants to throw this time. He has some pressure. Throwing back. Tipped. Incomplete. The ball was intended for his tight end, number 95, Gordon Hudson. Scott Pettis was cutting in front of him, and Pettis thought the pass was intended for him, and when Hudson saw Pettis touch it, he went crazy because he knew he had a touchdown. What really impressed me about McMahon on that play, though, was, you know, we've talked about the term reading the coverage. He looked for his primary target, his second target, his third target. He got into a scramble. There is the quarterback comparison. Both of the quarterbacks having a good day, but clearly the edge to BYU's Jim McMahon. Yeah, let's not forget the job the defense has done for BYU also. Third and goal from the eighth. Complete. Ball home was really harassed coming off the line by Vernon Dean, who was playing bump and run with him all the way. They tried it again to the other receiver this time, only to the same side as before. And again, it does not work. So it is fourth down and goal from the eight yard line. And the field goal unit is coming onto the field as you see. 3.59 remaining in the game. Kurt Gunther. Junior from Provo, Utah, will attempt the field goal. Tom Homo will hold number 46 right at the 15-yard line. It'll be a 25-yard attempt. No good. He missed it to the right. Didn't allow for enough hook. And the 25-yarder is wide. So with 3.56 now remaining in the game, the score remains BYU 27. San Diego State 7. The Aztecs will get the football back at their own 20-yard line. They will take the lead in the Western Athletic Conference and have the inside track to the WAC title. BYU has really had San Diego State's number of late. Goffler, good protection. Firing and complete to Darius Durham, who made a great reception even though the defender was there. Durham made a fine catch. Number 13, Steve Brady, was covering. A reminder, a special edition of NFL football tomorrow night here on ABC at 5 Pacific Time and 6 Mountain, the L.A. Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. And then on Monday night, our regular edition will be Chicago at Detroit. A little black and blue divisional action going there with Walter Payton and Billy Sims running the football. Sunday and Monday night, NFL action here on ABC this week. First and ten. Hofler throwing back to Craig Ellis out of the backfield. Ellis gets a block, running for the sideline and the first down. Out of bounds right at the first down marker, the 48-yard line. Where they mark it will depend on whether or not it is a first down. Kyle Whittingham, number 59, 
made the tackle on the play. Bob Gilster over to Rob Gilster, number 64, with a good block to get Ellis to the outside. Oh, I've always liked that throwback screen. For some reason. Remember when Y.A. Tittle used to throw that to Hugh McElhaney? Remember that far back? I think that was before my time. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I know what your time is. I'm not going to tell them. First down. Kofler with lots of time. Over the middle. Complete to Ellis again. Ellis can't get away from the grip of two BYU defenders. He gets it into BYU territory at the 46, however, wrapped up by Kerry Whittingham and Kyle Whittingham, the two Whittingham brothers. Look at the disciplined drops here of BYU secondary. They're going into their three-man rush, prevent type defense. And look at the spacing here in BYU secondary and the reaction to the football once it is caught. The Whittingham brothers, the two linebackers now in the game. Carry along with his older brother, Kyle. Pressure from behind, Brandon Flint, number 99. 240-pound defensive end from Layton, Utah. Gets Kofler before Matt can do anything about it. The loss is back inside the 40-yard line. No, they're going to mark it outside the 40 as we look at it again. There again is what we call the blind side. In every quarterback's life, there is one. Occupational hazard of playing that position. San Diego State has called a timeout as you look at the quarterback sack statistics. They'll mark it at the 40. look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the San Diego State 43, 221 remaining in the game. There's Brandon Flint who made that sack. And the Aztecs have called timeout in an effort to at least score one more time before the game is over. Hey, who do you like for Chevy players? Well... I think we've made our selection. I think that we have that one pretty well wrapped up. Uh, BYU, there hasn't been any doubt since the first quarter, but, you know, for a while it was it was kind of a toss-up between Matt Kofler and Vernon Dean, I think. And how do you feel? I like Vernon Dean. Well, even though, even though BYU has done a lot through the air, Vernon Dean has played such a fine ball game as far as coverage and, and supporting the run when they have run that we, we would have to say that Vernon Dean would be the most valuable player for San Diego State. Well, he intercepted Jim McMahon twice, and McMahon had gone 156 passes without an interception, and then he picked him off twice, nearly picked him off one other time. Remember, a $1,000 scholarship in those players' names will be awarded to their schools on behalf of Chevrolet. That scholarship going to the school's general scholarship fund. Jim McMahon and Vernon Dean. Kofler being pressured, running for the sideline. Brandon Flint finally throws him out of bounds on the far side. And the San Diego State bench, understandably, is unhappy about that. But no flag has been thrown. They'll mark it right at the 45 of San Diego State. The clock stopping with two minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the game. You know, I think BYU's defense was fired up today because last week it was a disastrous yeah, afternoon for them. 628 yards of total offense were rolled up against the Cougars by UNLV. And Sam King, their great quarterback, threw for 473 yards in that ball game last week. So they had a point to prove today. Especially they had incentive from the fact that Kofler and San Diego State had such a great offensive show against Iowa State last week themselves. Kofler running with it, slides down at midfield and is covered there by 59 Kyle Whittingham and number 54 Kerry Whittingham. Kerry, the freshman brother of that man, senior Kyle, number 59. Kyle would be in there for our Chevrolet Most Valuable Player himself if it were not for McMahon. He would be, I think, a clear-cut choice any other day. He certainly was the top defender for the Cougars today. Here is Steve Young, the backup quarterback to Jim McMahon, the great-great-great-grandson of Brigham Young himself. And Steve Young is into the ball game for BYU along with the reserve backfield by Sikahima, the ball carrier, the tailback, fighting for yardage to the 46-yard line of San Diego State. Number 72, Brad Williams, the junior defensive tackle, made the play. Steve Young was very impressive filling in for, uh, for McMahon the two weeks that McMahon rested his hyperextended knee. And you might think that Steve Young, being the great-great-great-grandson of Brigham Young, would be from Utah. He's not. He's from Connecticut. 
He came a long way to go to school there, but you might understand why he did. He's from Riverside, Connecticut, a sophomore. 6'2", 190 pounds. Probably the quarterback of the future for the Cougars. And he completes this one. It's dropped. Incomplete is the ruling. It was intended for the tight end, David Mills, number 91, the backup tight end who's in the game now. Had it for a moment. It'll be third down and five from the Aztec 46. But then again, Brigham Young came a long way to get to Utah. <laughs> he took a, a little tougher route, too. That's for sure. Third down, about five and a half yards to go on the draw play. Very close to the first down at the 40-yard line is Bruce Hansen. Sophomore reserve running back from American Fork, and Kevin Ritchie, number 71, made the tackle. Now you see the clock with 115 remaining in the game. It is enough for a BYU first down at the San Diego State 39. Clock restarted now with 108 remaining after the setting of the chains. BYU running out the clock, the stadium emptying in the last five minutes or so. By Sikahima. Sikahima runs through one tackler, hauled down again, number 71, Kevin Ritchie making the play. Short yardage, down to the 36-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. I like the way that guy runs. He's always looking for daylight. Good kick returner, too. Lavelle Edwards, you saw on the sideline, being congratulated by one of his assistants. Doesn't seem to make any difference, Lee, what San Diego State does over the last few years. BYU, since San Diego State joined the WAC, has really been able to control them very effectively. Sikahima again, cutting it back. A penalty marker is thrown in the BYU backfield. As By gets it inside the 35. 28, Robbie Chapman, along with number 60, Doug Reed. Junior linebacker from San Diego holding again the 10 yard variety and the indication from referee Pat Flood against BYU. To amplify what you just said, two years ago in this very stadium, BYU came in here with Mark Wilson as their quarterback and they scored on the initial play from scrimmage and then they turned it into a rout. And of course, last year you and I covered this same game on regional television. And again, it was a lopsided contest. Another one today. The penalty moves the ball back to the 47-yard line. Where it will now be second down and 18 yards to go. Well, there's another look. And the clock has run out. They will not get another playoff as time has run out here in San Diego. Time ran out, unfortunately, for San Diego State a long time ago as Lavelle Edwards comes over to congratulate his former offensive coordinator, Doug Scoville, the head coach of San Diego State. We hope to get a word with Jim McMahon, our BYU Chevrolet Most Valuable Player. So stay with us. We'll be back to also wrap up what else is happening in college football in just a minute. Discover stamp collecting. Harris? There's Jim McMahon. Can you hear us at all, Jim? Yeah, I can hear you a little bit. Okay, this is Steve Zabriskie, Jim, along with Lee Grosscup. Congratulations on another tremendous effort. You uh, broke a couple of more NCAA records today. I know that you're happy about that, but uh, most importantly, this big victory in the WAC Conference today. What do you think made the difference for you? Well, I think uh, early on, you know, we, we just really jumped on them. We, we had everything going for us, and then uh, this whole second half, we just killed ourselves with uh, some mistakes, and uh, I wasn't throwing the ball too well, and that's what hurt us. Jim, this is Lee Gross Cup. Can you hear me? Yeah. Jim, Jim, I thought, will you look up a little bit? We want to see your face. Okay, there you are. Uh, I thought you did an exceptionally good job of reading the coverage today, and I've thought that right along about you. Now, what was it you expected from them, and what basically did you get in terms of coverage? Well, in terms of coverage, you know, we knew they were going to play us a lot of man and, and blitz us a lot, which, which they did. And, uh, you know, I just tried to, to read it. You know, the couple times I threw the picks, you know, it was just bad balls. I didn't get enough on it. 
I really, uh, you know, wasn't driving off my back leg as, as well as I should have. I think I was a little bit hesitant because because of my knee. But, uh, you know, I, I just got to get that ironed out and start throwing the football the way I can. We love watching you play. Good luck. Keep up the good work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jim McMahon, our Chevrolet Most Valuable Player for BYU today. The executive producer of ABC.